<coughs> Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. No, they said okay. Oh. They said. Welcome to the May 20th, 2019 Selectmen's Meeting. First off tonight, we're going to have a public hearing. RSA 31 colon 95-B3. To take testimony from those who wish to be heard concerning the following. To apply for, accept, expend, unanticipated monies in the amounts of $10,000 or more from the following in 2019. The National Fish and Wildlife Federation Coastal Resilience Grant and Great Bay Resource, Resource Protection Partnership Land Protection Transaction Grant. Good. Mr. Welch, did you? Mr. Chairman, um, we have the opportunity to apply for grants in the amount of $10,000 or more from these, these agencies to help us with our um, resources for flood protection. Uh -huh. And, and uh, the department has, uh, is prepared to file grant, grant applications with them, uh, provided the board approves. So do we have uh, anyone from the public that would like to talk to this? Please join us at the podium. Seeing none. We'll bring it back to the table, Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah, I have a quick question, Mr. Welch. Um, who, who is uh, sponsoring this? Who, how do we apply to the government, and what part of the government is it that we that we need money from? Uh, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation Coastal oh, Resilience okay. Grant. So it's a uh, so it's a national organization. So it's um, just them that we'd apply to for the other. That's correct. Um, Hmm. Great Bay Resource Protection and Partnerships, uh -huh. uh, and the state recommended it. Okay. Do we know of other communities that have applied for this and, <clears throat> and how these grants work out? My understanding is that several other communities are applying, and the grants seem to be, uh, from what we understand, to be easy to work with, uh, <laughs> which is a nice thing to say. Uh, and they, they will help us in our, our grant allocations for resource protection. Okay. But we don't have any historical perspective yet. This is pretty new. This is new for us. This is a grant we haven't applied for before. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. No, it's up. Thank you. Okay. So now, is this one that will come again in the two weeks or? No, this is, um, if you pass this this evening, then we will be allowed to apply for, we'll, if the grant is accepted, we'll be allowed to accept it and expend the funds in accordance with the requirements of the grant. All right, I make so, a motion that we accept it. No, second. All those in favor, unanimous. Good. And there's one not here yet. Close the public hearing. Yeah, and we need to close the public hearing. I'll move that we close the public hearing at? It's 1908. 1908. Oh, three, I'm sorry. Oh, three. Um, I had it right. Okay. And I'll second. Was, oh, good. All those in favor? Excellent. Next, we have public comment. Would anyone like to join us for public comment? <coughs> How are you doing, Mr. Grady? Evening, Chairman. Evening, Board. Mr. Welch, Craig Grady, 120 Kings Highway. I'm here on behalf of the Hampton Beach Village District and the annual Master of Sand Sculpting Competition. Uh, once again, we'd like to ask for your support um, with the event uh, in regards to the public works uh, we're asking for the loan of 500 feet of wooden fence and uh, post delivered to Hampton June 11th through and then picked up on the 29th um, and just increased public uh, police awareness during peak hours of the event June 20th through the 22nd um, fire department's always been on uh, call if we need water um, Knock on wood, we haven't needed any for the last <laughs> 10 years or so. I'd so, um, like to take a minute and thank you for your past support. Um, I haven't been up in a couple of years. Um, without it, you know, it's really helped for the mm -hmm. event to grow, not to only be one of Hampton's signature events, but New yeah. Hampshire's as well. Right. Uh, it's gaining uh, world recognition. Um, uh, 
you know, with, there's no back and forth. So um, take an opportunity if anybody from the viewing public would like to uh, join in the festivities, they can go to hamptonbeach.org, uh, go to the sand sculpture okay. event, and there's a volunteer sign up form there. Um, also, they could call 929-6301, uh, leave a message and somebody will get back to them. Uh, I hope everyone gets a chance to come down and view the, uh, the events. We're gonna have uh, some really extraordinary sculptors as usual down there. Um, I set the bar a little bit higher this year. Next year is going to be our 20th, it's the 19th wow. this year. Um, so, uh, the, you know, to earn a seat for next year, and I hope to uh, do a lot of changes and just make it more exciting for not only the viewing public, but the sculptors so that it'll, it'll really set the bar a little bit higher for them this year. Um, the sculptures, just a word of note, the sculptures will only be up for two weeks this year. If you have any friends or family that want to see it, they'll have to get there before June 27th. Um, on the 22nd will be uh, public voting one to three. Uh, the awards will be at 8 p.m. followed by a special fireworks shoot on Saturday at 9.30 wow. p.m. Wow, thank you. I thank you. Th thank you, we'll make sure that it's mentioned at all the meetings. Appreciate it. Anybody you else for public comment? You need a motion on that, Mr. Chairman? It's, no. it's on the consent agenda. No. Oh, okay. And. Um, <laughs> So seeing no other uh, public comment, we'll move on to announcements and community calendar. Mrs. Wolsey. Um, nothing this evening, sir. And Mr. Yeah, Wall just a couple of things. Number one, Charlie Preston just reminded me of the state park meeting on Wednesday the 22nd, this yep. Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, from five to eight, I believe the time is. Is that That's correct? correct? All right, five to eight. So, and it's at the state park at the uh, seashell Correct. Upstairs there. So this Wednesday, the state park meeting, um, five to eight people that want to get down there and find out what's going on. The other thing that I just want to say, just an update on the cable re renewal committee. Can, you want me to do that now? It's just a quick one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the ca the the contract runs out 2021, right, right. Fred? That's correct. 2021. Mm -hmm. So the cable renewal committee, what they have been doing is they got the public survey, they got the public information and stuff which they put together. And on the advice of legal, we're having the contract looked at because there's so much change going on in yeah. the uh, yeah. federal law, and there's so much change going on with Comcast that we haven't looked at, so we're taking our time before we do anything to make sure that we dot all the I's and cross all the T's. I think some people are just interested in the franchise fee, <coughs> and we just have not, there's no decision on what's going to happen with that right. yet. So right. it is something that takes time, and that's where we are with it right now. Okay. Mr. The only thing I know is I uh, heard this week of a passing of former fire chief all along down in Florida a couple weeks ago. Oh, he was mm -hmm. still alive. He still was, yep. And, uh, Send all the condolences to his family. Yeah, and there's not a lot of good things for him, too. Yep. And <clears throat> um, did you have anything, Regina, that you want to mention? Community events? Yeah, announcements. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was just, I just attended the uh, SAU listening session on diversity. There was quite a turnout there, and unfortunately I had to leave, but that was great to see. The State Parks meeting on Wednesday, did anyone? May 22nd. Already talked about it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the post-35 Memorial Day celebration, 8 o'clock on uh, the beach. At the beach, at the statue, and then the... And that's <laughs> on Monday, right. Yeah. Right, Monday, and then 11 is the parade. I right. just got reminded from Pat Bushway. And then um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, and um, there was a lot of people had fun with the... Uh, tow truck parade, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> although I did have people call and complain about it. You could hear it all uh, over. Well, yeah. I think a lot, I'd have to say <coughs> that it, it's amazing. Um, the people I saw that were affected by it, at first they thought, well, this isn't so, you know, because they came to my business, which is totally mm -hmm. blocked by it, but not, they, it, you would think it's blocked, but it wasn't, because yeah. you can still get right. in and out. And once the people got used to it, the ones that were there, the next thing I know, they wouldn't leave. They, wouldn't leave. they were sitting outside <laughs> and watching it and having a good time. So there's something infectious about it. Mm -hmm. But I will say that uh, one person did say that they, they, they were 
thought that there wasn't any permits given for it. Oh. So um, we'll have to talk about that later. Hmm. Uh, thank you. Um, but everybody, from what I saw, had all positive feeling about it. Mm. Um, next, we have the approval of min minutes, April 1st, 2019. I will so move, Mr. Chairman. Non-public Se session corrected. Second. All those in favor? And next, we have the March, I mean, April 8th, 2019, public session corrected and non-public session. Oh, so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Then there's April 15, 2019, public corrected and non-public sessions. I will so move. I'll second. All those in favor? Unanimous. On the April 22nd, 2019, public additions and non-public sessions. I'll make the motion to move. Second. All those in favor? I abstain. Yeah. And on May 6, which we have some meetings, some things changed here. Was this, this yours? It shows 2018. No. Was that the good change no. from 4 to oh, 3 Oh, it's yeah, 2018. Yes, there was some. I'm not sure what it's it is. It's not a typo? Christina no, had uh, made note, made mention that uh, they hit, we had reversed who made the motion and who made the second uh, on the... Uh, the beginning roll call vote uh, for the 90, uh, 91A3 litigation for the non-public session. So this was last year? No, no this is May 19th. This is May 6th, 2019. 2019. Oh, it says 2018. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. That's I, I asked oh, if it was okay. a typo. Yeah. Okay. It's a typo. Does someone want to make that motion? I'll make the motion. Second. All those in favor? And I'm going to abstain from the May 6th because I didn't participate in the whole meeting. I, I, I've got one correction to, well, addition. On page 4 of 12, the bottom of the page, it says good report, good plan. I I'd also said that it's too bad we didn't have this information before the March meeting. Okay, and I wasn't here, so we have one abstention and three people, four, correct? Yep. And uh, <clears throat> next we have the consent agenda. There are veterans credits, elderly credits, letters of no objection for finest kind brewing, mobile food truck hawkers and peddlers license, Verizon pole petition license for Dumas Ave, heritage commission appointments, USS Virginia, committee appointments, and HBVD uh, 19th Annual Hampton Beach Master Sand Sculpting Classic Assistance Request. Mr. Chairman, I will move the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I have one quick question related to that. The mobile food truck, hawkers and peddlers license, is there any cap on that? Do, does anybody know? It's for a private. It's a private party, as I understand. That's correct. No, I understand that. But suppose you have fifty uh, entities asking for the hawkers and peddlers license. You know, how many food trucks can you fit? It depends down on how there. many parties you got. This is at a hotel. Oh, okay. Yeah. This isn't just driving around the beach. No, no, no. Oh, okay. It has to be for a set location. I misunderstood it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Next, we have appointments. Number one is the New Hampshire Department of Safety, Homeland Security, and Man Emergency Management Director Harper, Planning Chief Fallon, Assistant Planning Chief Welch, Hazard Mitigation Officer Alex Monastero, Hampton HSEM Field Representative Heidi Lawton. Please join us at the table or wherever you'd like. Maybe someone want to be at the um, podium. You have more chairs in this. Yeah, we can grab a chair and bring the tool. I That's think good. it would be okay with just Whitney and I. Just remember okay, the great. microphone. Good. Thank you. Because people at home really want to hear you. Okay. Good evening. Um, thank you for having us. I'm Fallon Reed. I'm the planning chief at New Hampshire Homeland Security and Emergency Management. And uh, join with me is Whitney Welch, my assistant chief. And um, as you had mentioned, Assistant Director Harper, and then our State Hazard Mitigation Officer, 
uh, Alex Monacero. So we uh, were invited to chat with you all about um, our hazard mitigation program. And uh, Whitney, uh, previous to our current appointment, was the state hazard mitigation officer. So she is our in-state expert on all things hazard mitigation, um, has put together a little presentation for you, which you all have handouts for, and we have some for the, um, the public yes. in attendance as right. well. So um, we'll turn it over to Whitney. She's got the presentation, and then kind of as questions or things pop up, please don't hesitate. Thank you guys again for having me and having all of us. Um, so really tonight, I'm just going to go over a brief overview of all three hazard mitigation assistance programs and then based on the flood impacts that the town of Hampton has been experiencing over the past few years, I figured I'd dive into potential projects that you guys would be looking at. Um, okay. Let's listen to her whole presentation and ask the questions mm -hmm. later so yeah. people can write them down if they don't sure. want to forget them. So before we get too far into it, I did want to review what FEMA deems hazard mitigation. Um, so we have the big FEMA definition. However, it's really just the sustained effort to reduce the long-term impacts of hazards and to lessen the likelihood of hazard events. This is specific to natural hazards. It is not for technological or human caused for this funding. Um, we have our authorities for these programs. You have your Stafford Act, the DMA of 2000, National Flood Insurance Act, 44 CFR and 2 CFR, RSA 21 P37, and most recently the uh, DRRA Act of 2018, or the Disaster Recovery Reform Act. Wow. So there are three programs um, under HMA. There's the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, and there's the Pre-Disaster Mitigation and Flood Mitigation Assistance Programs. The best way to look at them is to couple the two, PDM and FMA, and then kind of look at Hazard Mitigation Grant Program separately. Um, the HMGP program is directly tied to a disaster declaration, so we only have funding available after a presidential disaster deck. Um, it is 15% on top of the overall amount of public assistance awarded to the state, and it is eligible statewide even if your county was not declared. Um, PDM and FMA are um, annually appropriated by Congress. Um, so we don't really know the specific amounts until the notice of funding opportunity comes out, but usually it's around 350 to 380 million for PDM and a little, probably like 250 million nationwide for flood mitigation assistance. Those two are nationally competitive, um, whereas the hazard mitigation grant program is specific to the state. Um, so these are all the eligible activities, which is in your handouts. Um, I know it's very small on the screen. This is the big one, is it? Mm -hmm. um, but this is for, you can see which ones are eligible under which program. However, for tonight's presentation, um, we're really looking at the property acquisition and structure demolition, property acquisition and structure relocation, and structure elevation. Mm. Um, and then a very important slide we have is eligible sub-applicants. So for the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, PDM and FMA, um, state agencies, federally recognized tribes, and local communities are the eligible sub-applicants. Um, specifically for HMGP, there are certain private nonprofits eligible. And then we have our funding and cost share. Um, the most common is the 75-25 cost share. So there's a 75% federal and 25% non-federal cost share. Um, that is the um, responsibility of the sub-applicant or applicant. Um, then you can have certain uh, criteria that puts you into a higher cost share. So PDM has the capability to get a 90-10 if you are designated an uh, impoverished community. And then the Flood Mitigation Assistance Program, because it's directly tied to the National Flood Insurance Program, mm -hmm. um, can potentially get you a 90-10 cost share or 100 um, if you have repetitive loss or severe repetitive loss on a property that you're looking to mitigate. Uh -huh. So we have additional eligibility requirements. Um, the biggest one is that you need to have a formally approved local hazard mitigation plan, um, which I know you guys do. Um, and there's different times that that needs to be approved depending on the funding source you're looking for. Um, for PDM and FMA, it needs to be by the application deadline. And then for HMGP, it's actually at the time of obligation. Um, all sub-applicants for flood mitigation assistance specifically must be participating in the National Flood Insurance Program um, and structures that remain in the special flood hazard area after implementation must maintain flood insurance for the life of the structure. That's for all the programs. So if you were to elevate a property and it's remaining in the special flood hazard area, it would need to have NFIP coverage 
um, after um, award and, and the project completion for the life of the structure. Um, just a really basic timeline uh, for the programs. Uh, hazard mitigation grant program, a disaster occurs. We have a disaster declaration um, that we are awarded and then we as an HSCM will send out a notification for letters of intent to be submitted to the state um, if you're interested in potentially applying. Uh, that is usually sent out to emergency management directors and floodplain administrators. Um, and we give about 45 days um, to get those in so we can then vet them for eligibility and submit an actual application package. Um, the reason we do that is the applications, if you guys, any of you have dealt with one before, are quite lengthy um, and very time consuming. So um, we don't want anyone to go for something that's not eligible and get to the point of filling that out. So. We give about, for the HMGP program, we actually give between eight to 10 months for the application completion because of all the pieces to it. Um, and we also have uh, 12 months uh, from the disaster declaration date to get the applications to FEMA. It's actually a four year period of performance, um, but the first year is spent on the application process. Um, but to kind of throw in a disclaimer, after it goes through the state grant agreement process and award, you're looking at probably um, three years or less for project um, execution. Mm. So HMA, or the um, Pre-Disaster Mitigation and Flood Mitigation Assistance Programs, um, like I said, they're appropriate, appropriated annually by Congress. Um, so we get a notice of funding opportunity that comes out from FEMA, the federal government, and we have actually a quicker turnaround for applications for this national competition. Uh, we give about 30 days after we send out that request for letters of intent, and then we have another 30 days usually um, for applications that are due back to the state because uh, we only have a 90-day window to get those into FEMA. So that's actually, uh, that whole period of performance is three years for PDM and FMA. Mm. Um, we have basic application elements uh, for all of the programs. We require a detailed scope of work, um, a work schedule, your cost estimate, and where your justification from that came from. Um, we have a cost share and how that would be met. Um, and then we have to prove cost effectiveness and feasibility and in compliance with environmental and historic preservation um, regulations. We also have your federal assurance forms. The biggest two um, factors that I kind of wanted to review a little deeper would be the BCA or the benefit cost analysis mm -hmm. and the EHP requirement. Yeah. Um, cost effectiveness cost review is really the um, probably the most time consuming part of the application. Um, so FEMA came out with this software uh, that we have to fill out to prove that it's a cost effective project. It's called a BCA, a benefit cost analysis. Um, and we, uh, as HSEM, do provide technical assistance to communities or sub-applicants that are looking to apply. Um, there are a couple things I did want to mention, um, since my view wasn't working well. Um, so specifically for the BCA, there are a couple of pre-calculated benefits, which means that if you fall within this bucket, you do not need to complete a BCA. You can actually just have a letter sent stating that you met the criteria. Uh, the first big one for property acquisitions is that if the total cost of the property acquisition project is $276,000 or less, um, you do not need to complete a traditional BCA. It is deemed cost effective. Hmm. Um, if you have an elevation project and it is $175,000 or less, um, then you do not need to complete a traditional BCA. It's deemed cost effective. Wow. And then the last thing is the consideration of sea level rise, um, that is something that can be um, input into the benefit cost analysis tool. Um, and you just have to provide the justification or science um, uh, behind uh, that uh, estimate. So EHP compliance and review <coughs> is actually not uh, too horrible upfront for the, for the application <laughs> process. It's, we just have you complete a checklist. Um, and then we also do complete the request for project review uh, on the state side at the Division of Horse Historical Resources um, if, if need be. Uh, FEMA may come back if they're reviewing an application and request additional information or if there's upon award any um, specific permits or um, timing restrictions due to endangered species in the area, then that just the sub-applicant must abide by those. 
um, floodplain management protection of wetlands. Um, those all need to be considered when doing any work in a floodplain or wetland. Um, you must avoid or minimize adverse impacts, and there's a bunch of executive orders that they have you follow and 44 CFR. So the two project types, like I stated, um, the first one we're looking at is structure elevation. Um, so you're physically raising and or retrofitting an existing structure mm -hmm. in accordance yeah with ASCE 2414 or higher when required by FEMA or local ordinance. So you can use um, foundations such as piles, piers, posts, or columns, mm -hmm. um, or elevating on fill. And you also must elevate utilities with that property. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot put any, um, you have to elevate the existing structure is a really big, um, there's no way to add on like an addition and elevate that as well, so. Mm. Um, I'm not going to read the eligible costs, but they are in your handouts. Again, um, there's quite a few. Wow. Um, and then specific for applications for structure elevation, um, there are a, a certain elements including mm -hmm. your physical address, um, estimated cost, uh, name and location of flooding source, um, proposed elevation of the lowest floor, a type of existing foundation, and also um, a statement that the project will be designed in compliance with the National Flood Insurance Program. Mm. So on a project closeout for elevation, you need to get a certificate of occupancy, um, a final elevation certificate, a copy of the recorded deed amendment, um, certification by an engineer or senior local official that the completed structure is in compliance with local ordinances and NFIP regulations, and then photographs, and once again, the verification of NFIP for each structure. Um, so property acquisition, we have two types. We have the acquisition and demolition, or the acquisition and structure relocation. So demolition, you're removing the structure from the hazard and you are deed restricting the property. Um, acquisition and relocation means that you are taking that structure and removing it from the spe special flood hazard area. Um, mm -hmm. These are just eligible costs again, so those are in your handouts. And additional elements uh, that you would need for property acquisition projects would be a clear title, statement of voluntary participation, final mitigation offer, and of course the deed restriction upon closeout. Um, so closeout, we have photograph of the property site, um, a copy of the recorded deed and attached deed restriction, um, lat long, and a statement of voluntary participation. And then on our end, we just have to log it with um, FEMA's repetitive loss database. Hmm. Um, so really, that was a really quick snapshot of those <laughs> specific project types and programs. Um, I will kind of also kind of put a plug in for our new state hazard mitigation officer. Having formally been in that position, any um, sub applicants that look to apply, we pretty much are there with you every step of the way if you're interested or even just want more information on the programs. Um, but I did include some resources um, as well as um, our contact info for Alex oh, and good. myself are on the back. Um, do you guys have any questions? I just wanted to clarify a couple things, and Whitney, correct me if I'm wrong. So if you had a resident that was interested in either the property acquisition or the elevation, you as the, sorry, you as the town would apply on their behalf. The, te the resident cannot apply for the grant. Mm -hmm. um, the 25% share typically would either, some towns have, um, depending on their financial status, have taken care of that 25% or ultimately it's on the, um, the resident to mm -hmm. do that. The amount is fair market value for the, commu for the property prior to um, the damage. So um, they look at a number of factors so that um, if they were to do the acquisition, that it's, you're not um, basically being bought out when your house has been flooded and you can't sell it type of thing. So mm -hmm. there's a number of factors, but if any resident, if the town decides to opt into this type of program in the future, you would apply on behalf of the on the resident, the homeowner, and then would work out the specific logistics on all that, which um, our office would work with you hand in hand the entire step of the way. Um, mm -hmm. Just for a point of reference, the town of Plymouth has done several property acquisitions over the last few years right along the river um, Plymouth State properties, and it has been a, um, a very beneficial houses that would flood every other day um, are now open green space. You can't build on that. It would be open space and um, have reduced their risk um, and the 
the damage to the, the homeowners um, there. So, and there's certainly communities that we can put you in touch with that have done some of these projects so they can talk to you about the specific highs and lows and other pieces from the town perspective. Um, so you can kind of get the, the full story. Hmm. I should probably mention too um, what funding would be available yes. next. I apologize. Um, so currently, um, we don't have any hazard mitigation grant program funding available. We had five disaster declarations between 2017 to 2018, but all of them have been applied for at this point. Um, we do have pre-disaster mitigation and flood mitigation assistance. Uh, we're anticipating the notice of funding opportunity this August. So we've been kind of ramping up for that. Okay. <clears throat> Mrs. Wolsey, did you have a question? Yes, I do, actually. Um, disaster recovery. When you have a situation in a community that constantly floods, mm -hmm. you can't recover. Now, you just mentioned the properties that, uh, I guess, the structures have been taken away, mm -hmm. and it reverts to wetland. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a little compensation for that. Uh, because nobody's going to stop the weather from doing what it's doing. Mm -hmm. And the signs are pretty clever about what the, uh, what the weather is going to do. I have to, <laughs> I have to say I am puzzled about this. It must maintain flood insurance. About maybe 10 years ago, I went to a uh, discussion at one of the local schools and the uh, local uh, gentleman from Boston who deals with the flood, uh, flooding stuff, and I asked him, why does the federal government continue to provide flood insurance for properties that keep putting in claims? What, what benefit is there to force people in very risky areas to pay for flood insurance and then they might get compensated and then two, three, five years later, they're flooding all over again. What's this? And I, I asked the gentleman, you know, where's the common sense in the federal government? And uh, he, he, he said, talk to Congress. <laughs> Yeah, we, Mrs. Wolseley, we're here to uh, promote what these people are doing, not try yes. to stop Congress. But I have, I have, but if this I may, is yeah. applicable to our community. We do have flooding issues. Uh, another thing that or, bothers she wanted to speak. Um, just yes. for clarification, our office doesn't deal with the insurance, so I wouldn't feel comfortable speaking to that towards you. We are more on the grant program for providing mitigation. Right. But you are telling us that a requirement within the scope that you're showing here, that you would be required to maintain flood insurance. At first. That, that's for the elevation. For the elevation. Yep. Yeah, well. Um, let's see, I had a couple of, of odds and ends here. Uh, dredging the harbor. We have a river and a harbor and the ocean goes in. And the federal government, and I don't know whether you would have any, uh, uh, anything to consider on this, the federal government manages to kind of poke along maybe every 10 or 12 years to dredge the harbor. And failure to dredge the harbor is causing flooding issues down there. Do you take a look at The harbor federal? specifically is managed by the Army Corps of Engineers. At the federal yes. level, we yeah. again, it's not yeah, we within need to our lane. What you are here for, okay. which is yeah. what they gave you but in this order. Do you have any more questions about what they presented Wait here tonight? But this, there's a whole scope here, and I understand that you're focusing on part, but this is not a small problem, <coughs> and I appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank any you, other Jeff. questions, Regina? Do you have some input here? I do. I have some questions. On this presentation, thank you very much. Is it po is that going to be available to us electronically of so course. that we can email? Yes, it everything too? we presented to you is um, uh, open source public information, so we mm -hmm. can provide that. And it's in mm -hmm. here, did you say? Yes. Uh, the yeah. the paper, the hard version, but we can certainly we can send it electronically. email to to mm -hmm. Mr. Welch. So because we have sort of two things going on, one down in the North Beach part of town, where it's 
we might be able to address it, but there's a lot of, there's sort mm -hmm. of a different issue than what we have going on down the main beach. Sure. So there's sort of two groups of active mm -hmm. residents that yeah. if we could get this information to, that would be really helpful. Absolutely. And um, also, as far as you mentioned that if your county is not declared, do you know if Rockingham County is declared? So we don't have any um, hazard mitigation grant program funding open right now, just we are looking towards the pre-disaster mitigation and flood mitigation assistance. In the previous disaster declaration from um, March 2018, mm -hmm. um, you guys were declared um, okay. within that, but it doesn't, regardless of the declared county, the whole state matter. is eligible. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. awesome. And then as far as the available funding, I caught you said pre-disaster mitigation, and then what was the second one that you said? Flood mitigation assistance. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and then, as you stated, the residents cannot apply, so it would have to come through the town, yeah, and yes. it's the fair yeah. market value mm -hmm. prior to mm -hmm. any damage. Prior to the damage. Flooding. And right. we can get you the specific language on that so mm -hmm. that um, it's accurately represented. Yes. Okay, and the hazardous mitigation grant program, that is specific to the state of New Hampshire. Yes. Yeah, okay. that, so the, the hazard HMGP program, when we get that money after a disaster declaration, it's competitive statewide. Whereas the other two options that Whitney talked about were nationally competitive. Wow. So we would work with you to submit an application and it would go against uh, potentially applications from all over the country. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm. Mr. Waddell. Yeah, thank you. Very good presentation. You speak very quickly and very nicely. And very oh, thank you. Very <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'd love to see that. Um, so can somebody apply after they've done the work? No. no, so it has to be prior. Mm -hmm. does. And how much is available? I mean, is this, would it, I mean, when people apply, mm -hmm. do they usually get some assistance or? So the hazard mitigation grant program, um, since it is statewide competitive, we find um, a lot of the projects that come in, as long as we have the funding available, will get um, approved or sent through to FEMA for approval. Um, but we don't know what the, amount will be because it depends on the size of the disaster declaration. Um, however, pre-disaster mitigation and flood mitigation assistance, um, because it is such a large bucket of funding and they're actually looking at potentially increasing that, um, we just look at the notice of funding opportunity and usually each year they have somewhat of priority projects um, and usually when we fill those we got, um, we have received uh, PDM 17 funding for the city of Summersworth. Um, it was not a, a property acquisition. It was actually a, a generator for their emergency operations center. So, um, so it's not it, because it is nationally competitive doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to see any funding from it. But because it is a grant funding and it's competitive, it's not a guarantee either. For the HMGP, the one that's competitive statewide, mm -hmm. that one we have an internal review committee that scores every application. And um, fortunately or unfortunately, between March 14, 2017 and March 13, 2018, we had five federally declared disasters, mm -hmm. which the national record is six in a one-year period. So mm -hmm. it was a little hectic. But so we had quite a few buckets of money that we were able to. So if, you, <laughs> if a community were to apply for one particular disaster, we try to see where we can fit it. And mm -hmm. then um, we maintain kind of a, a queue of applications that we would look at if the opportunity presents itself in the future. And you are allowed under these programs to apply for multiple at the same time. You just usually indicate mm -hmm. it in your application. And how do you get the information out? I mean, how do you mm -hmm. publicize we it share through that the meetings like this? Or? Uh, we actually share it with the emergency management directors for each of the communities. Um, and then they receive that information and work with their select mm -hmm. board or mm -hmm. um, you know, community leadership and mm -hmm. determine whether or not to apply. Very good. You ought to give lessons on how to do presentations. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. What did you just say about multiples? So, so. Bas basically, if, you, if the community were to apply for assistance, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter which grant program, we would try to find the best fit for you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And if there's multiple open, if there's PDM, at one point we had for pre-disaster mitigation 17, we had that and a hazard mitigation grant program open, so I just sent it to both buckets. So, hmm. yeah. No, I think it's a great presentation. It's, uh, Thank you. It, a lot of times it's hard to, to find your way through some of this stuff, but I think doing this and, and getting out and letting the people know mm -hmm. what there is out there and, and explaining to what we have, it'll help us a little bit more, but sure. also get, you give us a context to go when we need the help. So thank you. 
Um, yeah, and I wanted to say too, uh, giving you the kudos for uh, your presentation, I noticed that you skipped through the stuff too that needs to be skip skipped over, and I think that helps and makes your <laughs> points much easier. It's, so, I felt that. It's a very wordy presentation. No, you seem like you really got it together. In fact, I was going to ask, how long have you been doing this? I mean, in so, this program. Whitney has been um, the Assistant Chief of Planning since December. Okay. Prior to that, she was a State Hazard Mitigation Officer for about two, two years. years. Yeah. So she's very passionate about mitigation. Yeah. Um, so we try to, she clearly, you know, gets that message out. Well, I've seen a lot of um, presentations, and yours is the best. Oh, thank there you. There was a guy <laughs> here at the Hampton Area Commission that's with FEMA, and he was really, really good, too. Um, I can't think of his name. Tom was his first name. Um, he's over in Hooksett, maybe. Hmm. But anyways, I, I think this is really a big improvement over what's been happening for the last forever, really. It's been very difficult to get information. Um, who is our flood emergency management person, Mr. Welch? The chief of police is the director of emergency management. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's about to run out the door. <laughs> He must and have. I try to whip him into shape. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> well, and who is our floodplain administrator? Well, I don't think there is a floodplain administrator per se, but uh, all of the. All under the emergency. Yeah, all because under emergency management. So you're doing double duty because it sounds like or we triple. need to have both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you also, for some of these, you have to be um, an active participant in NFIP, which um, we'll need to work with the community to make sure everything's up to par on that. Yeah. Okay, because we want to make sure that you get in touch with us if there's anything that we're not doing. Cause we oh, absolutely. Just, we yeah. want to make sure to do the right thing. So we have, um, if I may, so Heidi is a field rep from our, from our office, and she's assigned to the community and works very closely with the chief. So... Um, we have that liaison already set up, but we can certainly... I've heard that Heidi name before. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, the, what should a person do if they feel that they're, um, you know, this is possibly something that could affect them in a positive way? Uh, because, like you've said several times that things go a certain way if there's multiple mm -hmm. um, uh, disasters on the same piece of property. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens if a person doesn't have any disasters and pays a fortune for flood insurance? Should they just keep uh, uh, paying a fortune for flood insurance and have nothing happen except that they get pay a huge amount every year? Or should they just surrender and open the doors and let the flood take over? <laughs> if, if I may, it, um, one of the things that we recommend for communities that are interested in pursuing this is to essentially poll the residents to find out how many folks are actually interested in either a property acquisition or an elevation. Um, and then you as the community, the Board of Selectmen, can determine how to move forward. So we would recommend to kind of see how many. And certainly we've had conversations with the chief prior that if you were like, like to have a public meeting mm -hmm. about this, we are more than welcome to come back to a similar mm -hmm. type of presentation, maybe focused a bit more on the individual homeowner and mm -hmm. their lane. Um, but ultimately it comes down to how you as the community want to proceed and if you want to take on this task um, mm -hmm. to facilitate these grants. So... You know, and I've, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it again just so that it's clear. Um, when the, t we realize that the town does officially have to do the application, but does that mean they have to do the application from the beginning to the end, or can the people work on it and then bring it to the town and Honestly. work together or... That's completely up to what, what the town and the citizens would feel comfortable doing. Um, we've seen, um, so for Plymouth uh, State University, um, most recently we submitted their fourth property acquisition um, application, and I know that our point of contact at the university worked very close with the private um, resident to do the application, because you're looking at... Um, going over and doing site visits and really looking at the, the tax card and um, that they are filling out their voluntary interest form. So you're pretty much working with them um, regardless. And a lot of the, the items you're working with them on um, are going to be pieces that fill that application. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really yeah. up to. 
to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And do you have more of one than the other? Are there more elevations or more acquisitions? Um, we found uh, that there's, historically, we've had more acquisitions um, done because they've just been applied for. Um, there's really no rhyme or reason. I, those people are probably more desperate. I, yeah, it, but, it, I mean, we've had elevations as well in the past. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, but overall, it's been more acquisitions of properties. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I think one of the problems that we have here is that people, really, they don't want to leave their homes. They of like course. their homes. They love, they um, and the biggest part of it, according to this Tom that I met, is as many of the people are people that are oceanfront properties that inherited the money, mm -hmm. uh, the homes, and they're in their mm -hmm. property, yeah. and they don't have the bucks that their uh, other people had, and the taxes are much higher today. So <coughs> uh, people don't want to leave, especially Hampton. Can, just love it. Quickly, yeah. can you explain what elevation is? Because some people at home might not understand when you just say an elevation, what you mean by that. So you're raising the lowest floor above base flood elevation. Um, so that you will find in your flood insurance rate map um, that's put out by FEMA. Um, and then I don't know, uh, unfortunately, I don't know how strict your local ordinances are, but you also have to comply with that. So if for some reason you Great have, if, yeah. but also if you for some reason you have to go like three feet above the base flood mm -hmm. elevation, then you would need to do that right. as well. Just so people understand what you're talking about. Of course. Yeah. And I yeah. think yeah. we had some things that were yeah. passed earlier this year, and I think that mm -hmm. most people, if they're in the flood insurance program, they know the, their flood elevation more than they know their phone number. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, if I may just mention one other thing, sir. So certainly Alex and Whitney's um, contact information is on here. Just for a note for the folks at home, um, if a local resident were to call us, we would actually direct them right back to you as the community. Uh -huh. So um, yep. certainly if they have, if you have questions, contact us, but if a resident has a, a question, it should be directed towards you. We can't really, um, we would just provide the same information that we did today. We won't be able to talk about specific mm -hmm. residents' homes or things like that. Mm -hmm. And what about, um, do you, ex and you might not have the answer to this because you're not involved in flood insurance, um, but it, I think this is more specific to uh, the new floodplains that are coming out and everyone says that they're in the next six months. Do you expect anything to change in, to, you know, compared to what you just told us, is this pretty much going to be this way, or can we expect a change in six months? No, this should remain the same as far as the programs go. Mm -hmm. um, on a different note, uh, the Disaster Recovery Reform Act might be changing um, some of the funding, uh, hopefully in a positive light going mm -hmm. forward, but that won't be reflected until um, federal fiscal year 20, so we have another year until there's... Yeah, they've mm -hmm. only been working on it 20 years. So, um, <laughs> And I think it's good that you're here because I don't know if you saw the weather tonight, but there's the first tropical storm is coming. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's coming. It could die out, but it's They're saying out it's there. headed towards Bermuda. It might impact Bermuda. Well, so. you might be able to get a plane there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have one more thing. You had mentioned about how if residents were to contact you, they're going to come directly back to us. We would refer them back to you, yes. So would it be best if you said you, do, you can do multiple properties? Mm -hmm. apply at one mm -hmm. time yes. to sort of get an idea if there was a real interest in doing this sort of gathering everyone that was interested in doing it absolutely and Most then definitely. having it come to the town and then yeah go through yeah here. um so we could certainly do work with you to kind of solicit the interest have a um, public meeting about it and then from there folks you can get a gauge you know is it maybe one or two people or is it 50 people you're right. not really sure at this point so this was just kind of the first step to exactly. um, open the doors to see what the options are. I think Thank that as, time, as things have gone on and there's more and more people doing it, um, I think that people just, if they're paying attention, I know I made a point to go down and look at a building that's being done right now. Mm -hmm. there, and I, it was done by someone that I hadn't heard of, about at all, and they seem to have done a wonderful job compared to what I think needed to be done um, and I looked on their website and there are answers out there for people so it's not a hopeless situation it's more expensive these days than it used to be when you just called that guy from over in Seabrook and he came over and took care of everything what was his name um, the guy that used to raise all the houses at the beach yeah. I know you're talking about and he did a good job but things have changed thank you very Mr. much Chairman, what, thank you one quick yeah are you folks reaching out to local planning boards at all to try to prevent problems sure. as they're designing developments and uh, 
homes and so forth. Any any uh, proactive? Uh, so we another um, avenue within our office is with our hazard mitigation planning, yeah. Yeah. and so um, which every community is required to have to receive any sort of federal funding. Um, Hampton has one there on a five-year cycle, and we work very closely with either the Regional Planning Commission or a particular contractor. So right. um, the planning folks are, yes, we do communicate with them on a regular right. basis. They're aware of the hazards. But I'm thinking um, of the local planning boards who are getting all these applications for 500 condos and all the stuff at the beach, mm -hmm. and of course the nice locations where you want to have your property. Sure. Of your locations that are going to fly. They're so, here to help the people that are having problems now. Um, and um, we've already taken care of the mitigation grants, right? We discussed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you. Sure. It sounds thank like you. you're a big hit here you. tonight. <laughs> we appreciate it. And thanks to the other people that are in the audience being supportive. Next, we have Donna Bennett. Tax collector, tax deed. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ladies. I brought Vivian with me so she can see what goes on at the meetings in case she ever has to fill in for me. Um, I'm, I trust you all have a, a binder. In the beginning of the binder is a list of the properties. There was, I believe, six on the list. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, we are down to three, Good. so we can cross off number three, number five, and number six. Those are all paid. Um, I know you have to vote on each one. Do you want me to do each one separate and have a vote, or do you want me to go through the whole list real Why quick? Why don't we do that? It might be. Go through the whole thing real quick. Um, uh, do, do you want to do each one separate? Well, you can no. do a motion stipulating each okay, of the three. Okay, well, we'll do them all together. Okay. Um, so number one on the list, we already have a payment agreement with that person. Uh, they're following through in, with that payment agreement, so we'd like to just go ahead with that. Uh, number two on the list is a little bit different than normal. We are requesting, after I talked with Mark, uh, to re-notify that person. Uh, there was some question about the certified mail that came back and the signature that was on it. We didn't really like what it looked like, so we'd like to uh, postpone that for 30 days. I'll, I'll re-notify them again tomorrow and then come back again next month. Um, and then number four is the last one we have. Uh, she has requested a payment agreement, has signed the payment agreement, and has already made the first payment Good. of the payment agreement. Good. Once she... Um, because she qualified for some discounts going forward, there will be an end, and she should pay it up in a year. Good. Everything that's outstanding. Okay. So we actually have the payment agreement here. If if you'd like to sign that tonight, and a deed waiver, okay. which we would need for that, and Vivian's yeah. going to pass that to you if that's okay. Good. Thank so that's you. all we have tonight. I make a motion that we accept her. The recommendations. Mm -hmm. I'll second. We have a motion first uh, and seconded. Any other questions? I just want to make a comment. Um, excellent work because yeah. we're talking for amount owed for all outstanding taxes, including interest and costs, just a little over eighteen thousand mm -hmm. dollars. And I know we're going to be approving the tax warrant next, which is twenty-eight point right. eight million dollars. Right. So that's excellent work, eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, and Thank we you. did send out fifty-nine certified deeding notices this year, so to get it down to three, it's pretty good. Great, yeah, yeah it's awesome. Yeah, Thank it's you. Amazing. There you go. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very Great. much for coming good. in tonight. Thank you. We'll hang in for a minute or two. We'll, we we're need getting to it around. Make a, we'll collect that tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, okay. Can make a motion on that. Thank you. Do we have to motion? motion Sir, to, do we have to make a motion to sign that? Yes, you do. I'll make oh, a motion. I'll that second. We okay. Sign the, uh, the paperwork that she's distributed. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. And welcome, Vivian. You can come anytime and join us. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Jim. All right. And next, Steve. Steve. We have Steve, Stephen Falzone, trustee of the trust funds, quarterly update. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening.
the evening. This is the Q1 update through April 30th, actually, because of busyness on both mm -hmm. myself and the boards. Yeah. Uh, we now have an appointment, so we'll go, uh, move through it. Uh, as of April 30th, I mean, U.S. large cap stocks uh, had a really good run between uh, January and April, uh, as did most of, as did all of the trust funds uh, for the town. Uh, total value of the real estate trust fund is now 22,185,054. Mm -hmm. uh, we had an investment gain of almost $800,000, and uh, the total weighted return of the fund was 3.7, and it was pretty much that way across the board, depending on the size of the uh, funds. They all had a really good quarter through April. A uh, couple of notes. Uh, probably over the next few months, there's going to be a custo custodial change taking place uh, at Bearing Point. Uh, our present custodian has not been servicing Bearing Point the way he feels it should. the fund should be serviced. Uh, he has a fiduciary responsibility to make sure the funds are serviced and cared for and accounted for in the proper manner. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm up to date on what's going on and as are you right now. So that's pretty much where we're at with that. Uh, and that is all I have. It was a good quarter. It was a real good quarter for the fund. This month so far has been a little choppy. <laughs> Lots going on between Iran and China and yeah. all kinds of other things. So the markets take notice and go up and down and fits and starts along with that. And that's pretty much it. Any questions? Yeah. Mrs. Wolseley? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you about. It seems like it's quite unsettled. But you feeling real reasonably comfortable with Well, the fund is the funds are positioned right. I mean, there's Good. bonds, there's fixed income, there's there's uh, stock investments, there's uh, it, it's positioned to generate income, and that's what it's been doing. It's been um, wonderful to watch the trustees of the trust fund and how uh, how you have uh, taken good care. It's of a good the group. Money. It's a good, it's a smart group. You're very and, good. Uh, Barry Point and David Mays are really easy to work with. He has a good, solid team yeah, in place, so it makes it easy. Do you have any questions, Regina? I do. Um, would it be possible to get a copy of that report through April 30th? Yeah, sure. It's online. Yeah, it's online. Yep. And I put copies oh, in your box. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get it. Okay. Thank I you. I can get you one tomorrow, Regina. I have it all in the right. office. Thank so. you. Mr. Waddell? Okay, should we be concerned at all about the custodial? I don't believe so. Okay. Uh, and, I, and I'll keep you guys informed as to what's going on. I'll keep you up to date. Okay. Thank you. I actually awesome. think it's, according to Dave, it's going to reduce our fees, so good for the funds, so won't be paying as much in custodial fees. Good. Thank you very much for Thank coming you here guys. tonight. We appreciate it. Take care. Steve. Yep. Next, we have Christy Pulliam. Yeah, if anyone at home wants, I, um, their reports are sent to me monthly, and they're um, under documents and then under the trust funds. And I can get you another copy tomorrow, Regina. I have them in my room, in is my that, office, if you is like. Is that your daughter that you have with you? It is. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She got the short end of the straw, I guess. <laughs> well, <laughs> Stuck with me. Maybe she can help you with your uh, efforts at work sometime. Maybe. She does. She's helped before. She's put budget books together and stuff in the past. Good. Um, so I'm here with the uh, April financials. Uh, the target is 33.34%. Um, the month's total income was $862,055. Of that total, the um, vehicle registrations came in at $342,925. Interest on taxes at $30,021. Building permits at $28,884. Highway subsidy at $63,469. Departmental income at $43,484. The rice sewer agreement, which is billed quarterly, came in at $26,222. And the real estate trust came in at $90,035. I also um, skipped the first paragraph, but the 2019 revenue is higher than 2018. 
as of April by $306,118. I did point out there, though, that um, the majority of this increase is $224,914, which came back from Primex as a return on premiums from, they're, um, they're not on a calendar year, they're on a fiscal year, so they go July 1 to June 30th, so that was from um, last year. On the expense side, you'll find that we're at 30.57% spent or under budget by $697,217 or 2.77%. Although this number may appear high to some, it is actually right in line with where we normally are at this point in the um, year. In April of 2018, we were under budget by $727,688 and in April of 17, we were under budget by 504,019. So this year we're kind of like right in the middle of those two amounts. So it's right in line. I feel that sometimes when you're dealing with numbers this big, it may be helpful to compare this under expenditure to a monthly household budget. Um, I think Rusty had pointed this out a few years back. And if your monthly household budget was $5,500, you would be under budget at this point by like only $152. So just to kind of put it in perspective, um, because wow. sometimes people see the 697000 and think, whoa, you guys are way under, but it's kind of right in line there. As you are aware, it is hard to analyze this budget on an annual basis due to many factors, one factor being the seasonality impact on many of the larger department budgets, and some of the smaller budgets are impacted by annual and semi-annual payments that result in significant impacts on their budgets today that balance out as the year progresses. For these reasons, I think it is best to look at the bottom line for the three big departments to see how each of them is doing, is running for the year, and in the smaller departments, by focusing on each line, you can see pretty well how each of these departments is running. I think that's important, especially um, on a year when there's a default budget, if you can, yeah. if people yeah. really sit down and analyze, that's why the whole report does show you line by line, and the de big, larger departments, they've come in and asked um, to cut different things to help accommodate other lines in their budget. So if you're looking at the bottom line of public works and police and fire, I think you're seeing a bigger reflection of where they currently stand. So that's kind of how I set this report up this month. Under legal, you will see that the outside council fees are at 111%, and the legal department as a whole is over target at 44.37%. Under general government, the building maintenance is at 64.88%, and the heating fuel is at 49.39%. Personnel administration is still over target, but the gap is closing as a driving line here is the, buy, uh, the bank buyback program, which I've explained in the past is paid out in January. Um, and that line is, at, is over um, target there. The police department is under target by $289,999. The fire department is under target by $102,000 and six dollars and the public works is under target by two hundred forty eight thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars wow. fund 24 the recreation has a balance of two hundred thirty thousand nine hundred and ninety four dollars with four thousand two hundred ninety nine being granted in scholarships so far this year and the scholarships just to remind everyone comes from the sale of those uh beach parking stickers that they do at the town clerk fund 25 the cable committee has a balance of four hundred thirty six thousand four hundred eighty six dollars Fund 26, private detail, has a balance of $204,215. And Fund 27, the EMS, has a balance of $321,354. Wastewater system development charge, fees collected in 2019 total $13,296. And then a balance in that account of $194,600. And um, approved expenditures from the board of $95,491. So that's it in a nutshell, I guess. <laughs> Trying to make my reports a little different. I hear that sometimes I just sit here and rattle off numbers and they don't make a lot of sense. So well, I, I tried to mix it up a little this month for you guys. You do a great <laughs> job. And I think you, just like the ladies before you, you deserve a lot of credit for Thank you. coming and making, <clears throat> making it available to everybody at home to understand. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Wolsey, questions? I just want your beautiful daughter to know that you have the money for the whole town in your hands and on your books, and we are so lucky to have you. Thank you. I would agree to that as well. And um, 
Yeah, great report. Uh, just a couple things. Yep. I like rattling off numbers sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, there, uh, I, I like what you said about how you have to look at the different line items and then also look at the total of the department budget because yep. sometimes, like for uh, legal department, we have outside yep. council fees is at over 111% right now. So that's obviously the line item that is getting overspent. Um, bank buyback program. I know we're overspent on that as well, but that is pretty much done being spent for a year. Only one time in January. Okay. Um, yeah, perfect. Okay. So there won't be anything else spent from um, that line. Okay. Great. And then the other questions, that, well, not really questions, but just statements. The fire department's under target by 102,000, but we just did get a notice from the fire chief that they're going to, are we going to up the manning levels like we did last summer? Yes. For, and that's going to start this weekend? Banny levels will be established this weekend. That's okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. And then the cable committee fund has a balance <coughs> of 436, 486, but we're supposed to approve a withdrawal later, I think, for 255,000 for the SAU. Yeah. So I just wanted to point that out. And then also, as far as legislation <coughs> goes, I was discussing a bill with Fred this morning, and then. I think late last night I emailed Christy and she gave me the financial impact of it. It's uh, luckily not too material, but it's HB 616. And it's uh, grants a cost of living adjustment. And they want to do, I believe it's about 25,000. It's about, yeah, 25, 26,000 for yep. the town of Hampton because they decided that they're going to charge that cost of living adjustment back to the municipalities rather than take it out of state funding. Oh. So if nothing changes between now and next year, which it probably will, it will be just using our default budget numbers, it will be about another $26,000 for the town of Hampton in expense. So Christy gave me that calculation today, so I just wanted to share that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Waddell. Thank you. Good report. Um, so we're on a default budget. So most of the most of the departments have cut what they're spending. Yes. So it's not as if we have extra money. When you when you, I think that's important to point out when you point out that we're under by X amount of dollars that we don't have extra money. Right. It's it's yeah. people are operating on a very tight budget this year. Correct. Yeah. That's why I tried to put it in perspective a little. I think it was right. Rusty, mm -hmm. like right. I said earlier, yeah. who pointed out to me early on um, you know that sometimes it's better to relate more to the people who are sitting at home and so right. that's why I tried to kind of relate it to like a household budget and stuff right very and good. I also thought it was important to point out that it's right in line with where we are every April for like the past three years now is your budget five thousand a month or five thousand a year I was saying a month. I just did like an hour. I know. I, I wish it was a, a year. Month, I'm coming over to your house. Too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My budget's higher, probably. <laughs> I have four kids. <laughs> Russie. No, I think you did a good job as always. Thank you. Uh, I, I think I think it is important that we let people know that yes, we are on a default budget, and yes, uh, there may be some savings there right now, but we're also telling them not to spend anything either. Right now. Because of the default budget, so Correct. what? What? And my curiosity is, what's not going to get done because of the default budget and, and, and trying to save that? So, thank you. So, are you comfortable with everything as, as the budget is going at this point? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. You're welcome. We thank appreciate you. it. It's always interesting. Thank you. Thanks. I treat your daughter to an ice cream or something. Sure. <laughs> yes. Be nice. Still wells is still open. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Next, uh, we have Ed Tinker with MRI Assessor. Good evening, Ed. Hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. Um, few items tonight. Um, first, I believe the um, first half tax warrant for 2019. Um, can't see anymore, so I have to wear glasses. Um, the amount of the warrant uh, is $28,767,418. Um, do you have any questions regarding that? 
pretty straightforward. The first half, um, we did include a um, last page of the warrant for you to look at, just so you can see the figures. But the, the you know, the second warrant at the end of the year is when I present all the figures for the year. And um, so this is just the first half, the prepayment based on last year's tax rate. Questions, Mrs. Wolfley? Uh, do you happen to remember what the 2017, uh, 2017 uh, let's see, what, uh, it, uh, the, the most recent, uh, um, have we gone up a huge amount or? Well, we, we increased values. So, I mean, we're probably, yeah. if, uh, if I'm thinking, maybe in the 27 million range last year okay. for, for the okay. first one. Yeah. So it's gone up, but it's not going to make you faint. Well, typically, just based on permits and new construction for the year, it's right. been pretty good every year. We do a pretty good uh, increase in value. Okay. Um, we are doing the reval this year, so that'll be a whole different uh, yeah. uh, value set in the fall. Yeah. I have a quick question for you here on one of the um, items that we received. Um, it shows the property. And it says something to the effect that as part of this request, the assessing office completed an on-site inspection on May 7, 2019, resulting in several changes, including the removal of a residential elevator that doesn't exist, three bedrooms, and resketched the dwelling to reflect an expanded garage in a revised third floor area. Shouldn't we be picking that stuff up? I mean, I, well, I think, I think, I mean, I can't answer to, to what Charlene did, but I think the original um, building permit information uh, indicated that those items, I guess, were initially planned. But it looks like quite a bit to have, you know, to yeah, I'm not sure to I can be off base uh, on the uh, on the abatement. Okay, that's it. Okay, so f back to the warrant. I mean, if, if anyone else has any questions or any information. I'm set. I'm set on the warrant. Need a motion. I will so mm. move I'll the second it. Uh, first half property tax warrant, $28,767,218. Is second. All those in favor? Unanimous. That $418. Oh, is it four? I thought you. I thought I'd said two. I mean. Oh no! When I, I, I'm sure I said. Four hundred eighteen. Four hundred eighteen. Four eighteen. Four eighteen. Yeah. I apologize. So there we go. We don't want to lose any money. No. Right. No. Okay. Um, secondly, we have some abatements. This is the 2018. Yeah. This is the first uh, a group that we we're submitting yeah. this year. There are actually uh, maybe four left that have not been uh, processed yet. We're waiting on some okay. information, and, you know, but anyway, that's there weren't that many this year. Um, but there are 12 as part of this. Uh, one being a tax collector's abatement, which is basically for bookkeeping purposes, right. um, didn't amount to much. Um, we also have one based on RSA 7621, has to do with the fire mm -hmm. on Thorwald Ave. Mm -hmm. um, relative to the 12 abatements, uh, the proposed refunds equal 22,351.03. Yeah with three being denials and mm -hmm. eight being, mm -hmm. eight being uh, recommended for abatement. That was well done. Are we okay. gonna take a vote on yes. that? I just have a question on the denials. How much, do we have the dollar amounts for those? You mean what, what would have been? Yeah, but we don't. No, okay, that's fine. No. But they're all material. Well, these ones, these ones that were denied were, um, referencing just land value weren't referencing total property value yeah. so it was it would be hard to say what what yeah. you know what effect the, the, okay. you know the, All right. <clears throat> thank you <clears throat> mr. Yes. Waddell I'm set. So, yeah. and so are you is the timing of these abatements uh, ahead of schedule or slower than it was in previous years would you say um, the way we did it before versus the way we do it now you mean with the MRI versus? Oh no, this is, it's similar. I, it's, I um, you don't see a lot of difference. No, oh, no, good. no. Okay. And is there a motion? I moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one question before Ed leaves. Yep. 
Ed, we have been talking about HB 700, right. and then you had sent a memo saying that it looks like there's going to be some more discussion on yeah. it. And right, we'll I do. Yeah, hmm. and I do have information I can pass along based on my reading of it. If you want to talk about it a little bit, or did you not want to tonight? Well, at all? I was under the impression that we were going to wait because. Well, I was going to do there a little bit. It was going to be a meeting in June, but yeah, if you have something to say Give them a little overview. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a little right. overview. Okay, so so. Um, HB 700 has to do with the valuing of utilities, and these are the utilities, as my understanding is, the ones that service retail customers. So it wouldn't be for uh, transmission utilities with just transmission lines or, um, and I can read those in a minute to you that are within the bill, but um, currently both parties, House and Senate, have, have uh, voted uh, to approve it. Uh, it passed both House and Senate. Um, the word is the governor is going to sign it, but hasn't yet. Um, so we're waiting to hear um, when he's going to do that. Um, it, it will begin in 2020. Um, it'll also require the DRA to come up with forms and, and some rules regarding um, how it's processed. Um, hmm. That's why on the 11th of June, the Ass Assessing Association is going to hold a meeting uh, to kind of go over it. I don't, you know, we'll yeah. see how much. Uh, Ed, uh, is this just electric utilities or does it include water? It yeah, be, yeah, be water, elect electric, and gas, right? Any, we have Unitil, yeah, okay. Utility, and Aquarium utility. Water. Gotcha. Uh, PSNH is just transmission, so it won't yeah. have, yeah. Um, according to the way I read it, it won't. Um, be valued the same way as, as those are. Um, so it's a five-year phase in with next year, or this year not, it won't take effect till 2020. Yep. Um, the process in 2020 will start by using, well, first of all, the, the five-year phase in, or the four years, will use a base of the 2018 assessed values that we submitted as part of the MS-1. Good. That'll be the starting point yeah. for those four years. Yeah. Um, the first year will be 80% of that and 20% um, relative to um, a combination of original cost and net book. Uh. The next year it'll go 60-40 and then 40-60 and then 20-80. Um, mm. Someone did do a spreadsheet for Unitil and Northern Utilities because they're basically... Um, the most forthcoming with uh, netbook value reports every year. Um, so the, the figures they came up with as part of this report was that there shouldn't be a drastic change <laughs> in value that we're currently assessing them for. Yeah. Um, now when, when 2024 comes, it's a whole different type of valuation. Not saying it's going to be any worse. It, uh, yeah. It's going to take into account um, a percentage of original cost and a percentage of net book but that's in 20, 2024 before that begins so for the first I'm sorry yeah 2025 or let's see just let me make sure if it's you're having nightmares five. Ed <laughs> yeah 2024 it'll, it'll, it'll hmm. become a different yeah. a similar process but they won't they'll not use the 2018 value anymore it'll be a combination of net book and um, original cost good heavens um, uh, and the 2018, sorry, the 2018 valuation, that's roughly like, I think it's like $100 million that for the utilities that we have here in Hampton. Does that sound about right? Just yeah, but that Hampton. would include everything. So for, for, for Unitil, Northern Utilities, and Aquarian, you know, it might be $70 million maybe. Okay. Something like that. Wow. 70 maybe. Something similar to that, maybe. So if... If the governor signs this, and then you, you the assessing, assessing is going to have some type of a meeting in June, and then would it be after Ed groups with all the assessors, would it be possible to have him come in again and update the board as to the potential impact for us? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. you like for electric and gas um, starting in 2024, it'll be a weighted average of 70 percent of each asset's original cost and 30% of each asset's, each asset's net book cost as reported. That's the reporting part. Now they, they give us an MS, I mean a net book value report, but this will be a different type of report. 
it will be both original cost and net book. But I think they're looking for it to be presented in a different way relative to HB 700. So that's what we don't know, how they're going to report it. But every July 1st, beginning, beginning in 2024, or even maybe sooner, because we do still have to use it. Yeah, every July 1st, beginning in 2020, uh, they'll have to submit <coughs> documentation that's required as part of this, just kind of like the polling conduit, where they had to present that, uh, okay. and we're able to do that once the, you know, the bill passed. Mm. All, right. All right, thank you. You're welcome. That's it. So that's, is that, do you have something else? No, I think we, you know, we can, you know, if, if the board would like, we can meet again as it gets closer to the, yeah. you know, the, the filing of this and the process of it for next year. It'd be probably good to go over when, when we get a little more information. So when would that be approximately? Um, you know, in J June 11th, we may be able to hear some things that are new information. We can put something together for the board, give so you a write-up or something. Well, we have the next meeting after June 11th, if we can have Mr. Tinker on the agenda. So ordered. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And um, now we have, um, yeah, is it Jason now? Yeah. He's hiding back there. I can barely see him. Good evening, everybody. My agenda might have been on that stack that I just gave you. Oh. Just take a quick look on the bottom. I'm not positive, but uh -huh. it's disappeared. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, all set? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to take a few moments of your time this evening to talk about where we're at in terms of the Town of Hampton Master Plan and an effort that the planning board is going to be undertaking very soon. Um, as you may know, the planning board has been continuing efforts to work toward a comprehensive update of the Town of Hampton Master yep. Plan, despite Article 10, which was the Phase 1 work, not passing at the March 19, uh, 2019 town meeting. Um, just kind of as a refresher from then, as you know, a master plan is required by New Hampshire statute. That's under RSA 674 colon 1 through 674 colon 4. Although the RSA state that revisions are recommended every 5 to 10 years, it has been 34 years since the last yeah. comprehensive update <laughs> with only some chapter of amendments from time to time. Yeah. This is a large project, as you know, that's very long overdue. Um, although Article 10 did not pass and our ability to complete a comprehensive update is necessarily limited at this time, the Planning Board would like to raise awareness about the importance of having a current town-wide master plan, mm -hmm. yeah. educate the public about the elements of a master plan, and build upon the momentum generated from the town's consideration of Article 10. To accomplish this, the Planning Board is proposing to hold what we've called master plan initiation sessions and its <laughs> second meeting of the month beginning on June 19th. Okay. Um, these sessions would consist of the planning board and its board of selectmen representative, plus a member of the zoning board, conservation commission, the HBAC, and the budget committee, all of whom have been asked to designate a member to attend. I've sent letters to every one of those boards to designate members to attend. Um, this will be an opportunity for our boards, committees, and commissions to collaborate and share their ideas on the subject matter and how to best proceed with a comprehensive update. Our hope is that these sessions will help build the foundation ultimately for a comprehensive update. For the anticipated June 19th start date, I have reached out to the RPC, Rockingham Planning Commission, and they will attend the meeting to present a Master Plan 101 type session okay. to provide an introductory up overview of master plans and how that process works in New Hampshire. We would then li likely translate into discussions of specific plan elements and approaches to public outreach at subsequent meetings. Other related subject matter that attendees wish to discuss will be incorporated and attendees will be encouraged to report, report back to their respective boards, committees, and commissions on the discussions. We'll also encourage town residents to view and attend these sessions to learn more and to provide any thoughts and feedback that they may have to the planning office. 
So that's a, a summary of what we're looking to do. Um, I would off, you know, open it up to any questions or suggestions you may have at this early stage that, that we can take with us as we begin this, this journey here on this process. Okay, Mrs. Wolsey. Your meeting uh, going to be televised? Well, it'll be the second meeting of the month for the planning board. So it'll be at oh. the planning board's second meeting of, of the month. We're going to start that June 19th. Excellent. Yep. And you really need to get this done, and I know you've been working very hard on it. But the town will benefit if we can get this master plan cleaned up and ready to go. Thank you for all your hard work. Um, so this is going to occur at the planning board. I know we had talked about having a vision commi visioning committee. Is a that steering committee? Yeah, we've talked about a steering committee. There's been talk about visioning, more about a steering committee at this point in time. Um, we thought that at this stage, you know, bringing all the boards, a member of all the boards and commissions yes. to the table to have that conversation would be the best, most logical first step. Once we get to the point where we're ready to actually initiate the plan through a vision chapter and land mm -hmm. use chapter and others, at that point we would actually form the steering committee. It, so it'll, it'll broaden out from, from that point. Great. Right, because yeah. I know the Hampton Beach Area Commission wants... Nancy Styles was appointed to chairman, and the public meetings turned into something that a little different than they were before. And once the public got involved, they had a complete interpretation, a completely different interpretation of what they right. thought the Hampton Beach right. master plan was going to be, and they had a lot of input. So sure. we want to make sure that doesn't happen for the town. Right. That's so right. I think from the beginning, if we could make sure that we keep the public informed, they're going to be a part be of the, they're going to be a part of this process right. early. Absolutely. Okay. And do you know anything while you're here about the uh, schedule for the capital improvement plan committee? Um, I don't. I, I know that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we haven't received the plan yet. I believe you're you're still working on that, Fred. Is that correct? Uh, I expect I the plan to be completed within the next two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And for the we'll, selectmen's end of the plan. Right. And then when I receive that, <laughs> I always send out that that email to everybody that explains, cool. um, you know, how the process works. And we can schedule some meetings. I can talk with the chairman of the CIP committee, and, and if we would like to have some meetings, we can certainly do that. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Very good. And the chairman is Tracy Emmer. Yeah, that's, yeah, what I thought. that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Mr. Waddell, sir. Sure. And Mr. Also, it's about time we get working on it. Yeah, it sounds to me like you're on the right track by um, yeah. having mm -hmm. the people that are involved in the boards come first and the steer steering committee later. Right, and, and that's the point. I mean, even though the article didn't pass, I mean, I want to emphasize how important this really is and, and to start this initiative right now mm -hmm. in any way that we can. And, and guilt, uh, building that feedback, gaining that feedback and building the momentum, I think, will, mm -hmm. will help a lot, I'm hoping. So, well, yeah. thank that's you the very goal. much yep. for coming in tonight. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Next, we have Jamie Sullivan, uh, Solid Waste and Recycling Study Committee. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. So we are here to appoint the trash committee that the board has um, directed to put together. Um, I see uh, on your agenda, you see the names of the folks who have put in. There's one more name uh, that late last night uh, contacted me and said they wanted to be uh, involved, uh, Mr. Jake Fleming. So that's a total of 14 folks who have expressed interest. So there's a couple of things, <coughs> excuse me. I think that the board needs to do tonight. One is identify how many members you want on the committee. We have 14 here. Usually, ideally, you want 13. Um, and then, ideally, I think you need to say, what's the charge? What are you asking the committee to do for you? Um, and based on the discussions I've heard, uh, just to give good direction and scope to them uh, so in our first meetings we can have a good objective direction. So how would you like to proceed? Um, well, um, why don't we start with hearing your recommendation? Okay. Well, I would recommend that all of the folks who have expressed interest should be appointed to the committee. Um, and I think, frankly, looking at it, it's a pretty good cross-section of folks. They come from uh, beach, town, business, <laughs> condo. I think there's a pretty good representation. Um, someone from um, the Mr. Silberdick, so from that group that's, I think it's a good representation of the voices that you've heard to this point. So I think it's going to be a good group that will be able to discuss the issues that come forward. Um, so I would recommend that you, I mean, what's your role you see for me? Do you want me as, as a member of the committee? Do you want me just to be the liaison? I could be the 15th if that's what you want. However Speaking you want for myself, I would like to see you be the moderator. Yep. 
Uh, I think that would be a good, um, and I've talked with you, and it sounds like you would like to, like it to go in that direction. That's fine. And um, I would like to see that the final project, uh, the final product of these, uh, the committee, <coughs> is a recommendation of where we should go with presenting warrant articles back to the uh, you know, to the public so that it can be voted on next year. And uh, because of that, we'll, we need to have it probably sometime in October, I would guess. Okay. Um, so for me, and we're going to sit and talk about it now, that's how I would like to see it go. Uh, you know, I think that we need to have a Warren article that addresses uh, the con concerns of the condos, and we need to have a Warren article that concerns the, uh, everybody's concerns about uh, the commercial trash. I don't see this as a, <clears throat> um, we're not looking for a mandate of whether we're gonna pick up the trash, but what are the conditions going to be? Are they going to stay the same, or are they going to be able to grow and um, people can, can, can have, start having more services, or are we going to limit to the services they already have? And I think it needs to be specific and fair so that it's fair for everyone, particularly so that the voters can understand. And um, I think that it, you know the committee working together is, is a good idea because uh, even though there are separate concerns, um, I think it gives people a, a, a view of really what's happening for everybody. And, that's mm -hmm. where the issue of fairness comes in, so that it's fair for all of the taxpayers. Great. So, Mrs. Wilsley, what are your suggestions? Well, first of all, I think we need a selectman on the committee, and I would like to volunteer. I think that would be helpful. And I, the other thing I would like to see focused on is the waste from the state park. No other state park in the state of New Hampshire dumps its uh, waste problem on the local community. Okay here one moment. Um, so, is anyone been approached to be on this committee from the state? I'm sorry? Is there been any uh, person from the state that wants to be part of this committee? No. I, I think that we, that's another issue, and I don't think that that's what this committee is about. I personally also don't feel that there should be a selectman on it. So, did you want to say more? Well, I would. I think we should have a selectman on it, and I would like to volunteer. That's I personally feel that the selectmen are going to have their chance of their bite of the pie here at this table after we get what the people want. People, you know, we've we've tried uh, to try to get it, but we have to be very specific and we have to put it out there to the public and make sure the public. This is what the public wants. Right. People are out there saying, well. You know, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. Well, people should know, and this is their chance, and if they have a chance to vote on the final solution, I think that people will buy into it, and I think it's the only fair way to go. But personally, I think that we, as a selectman, are going to take the information that is gathered by this committee. So I don't think we really need to be there just trying to well, stir it our, our direction. I think we really do. And also... I think we don't need to stir it in the direction... Well, rather than argue it, why don't you make a motion and so also, you can get a second, and, and then we'll vote on it and go from there. And also, I think the committee should have in mind Article 8 uh, on the 2011 warrant. That, what? Well, that's on the waste in the carts and 9,800 carts and 9,800 carts and all that mess. Which well, is I think that we're going to get some information here, and the selectmen are going to be able to do what they want afterwards, and we can provide, we can do other things that will complement what comes out of this committee, in my opinion. Um, so, did you want to make a motion that there should be a selectman there? Uh, I will, so move. I would, yeah, I want to talk first. Hmm? You want to talk? Or you want to address the motion, or what? Yeah, I mean, I think we should all talk about what's on our mind first before right. we make any motions. Okay. So, oh, okay. I don't care. That's how I. It's okay. Like, good. So, I understand where Mary Louise is coming from, but having to talk to the assistant town manager, I think maybe we can remain more independent with letting those guys do what they're going to do. 
But at the same time, I don't want it to be, oh, we're going to go to the selectmen and this is what we're proposing and then the selectmen have to say yes or no. I would like it to be more of like when we do the contract negotiations, like if you think there's something that we should know about, we don't have to necessarily make a decision, but we are kept up to par. I mean, I, I agree with you. I think the people on this committee are great and it's a good representation of what we have to deal with. And I mean, I know I talk to most of these people on a regular basis. So I mean, I know if they want to talk to me, they can call me up and talk to me like they always do. So I'm not too concerned with right. not knowing <clears throat> what's going on. But I think as far as the whole board, we should periodically get some sort of an update, not just come in. Well, he's going to be the moderator if that's what we decide. Yeah, so like he can with the contract negotiations, that similar type sure of deal. Yeah, yeah, there's no, no problem with coming in, and, and I see that as we can give you updates. Is, and I'm sure as this progresses, I mean, my attention initially will be uh, <coughs> initially sit down with Chris and Jen and Mark. There's been a number of questions about what is actually happening so that everybody there is operating from the same frame of reference. What are our costs? What's our pickup schedule? What are we actually doing? Because we've heard different things. So the first meeting, an organizational one I see, and then some information to everybody. So we're all operating from the same pieces of information. And then I can see that conversation ebbing and flowing, and there may be a time, hey, a meeting or two in, where the board, the, the, this committee needs direction from the board. I'll come back in and we'll say, hey, this is our sticking point. What do you think? And it may be guidance in that manner. I mean, I see at the end, you're going to get recommendation or recommendations from these folks. There may not be a full consensus. There might be multiple avenues we present to you that you'll have to decide how you wish to proceed, put them all on the, you know, all of that stuff. So I think without prejudging what's going to come out, that guidance from the board is critical. What is it you want them to achieve? And that sounds like it is. And then we'll let the folks go about doing their work. Yeah, and, but you are, uh, you are of the opinion that there should be the final product should be warrant articles that are going to come forward. Well, that's ultimately the board's decision, but I personally can see that as being a very reasonable outcome for this. Just and the same way that they go with the uh, labor contracts and stuff like that. Again, board decision, process decision, but absolutely I can see that being a result from the end of this group. Yeah. And Mr. Waddell? Yeah. I agree that, that Jamie should be the moderator, and I agree with what Jamie said, that uh, that this should be a, a, a an odd number, not 14. So I, I, I would think that he could be a voting member. If you have 14, then the, if you have an even number, you, you end up with ties a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, an odd number is better, so that, throw, I just throw that out. I think that it initially, you know, from a legal point of view, what are the RSAs? I think mm -hmm. what how are, are they... Uh, control on the trash and stuff. So I think it's important to have the legal aspect explained to the board. I think the ability, like you said, what's our ability to collect trash? How much trash can we handle down at the, so that we have, you have all that information and then you start from there and start to make some decisions Agreed. on where to go with it. So I think, I think it's a great start and I think, you know, you'll be, you'll be a good moderator and I think it, uh, keep it just, oh, and the other thing I wanted to think with, TV. Are you thinking about putting it on TV? I haven't really crossed that. I mean, they are. This is going to be a public body, so yep. minutes will be necessary. Yeah. Uh, that's why it's important for you to establish the number so that we can determine what a proper quorum mm -hmm. is for folks. All of that. Yeah. Um, as far as being on TV or not, frankly, it, it's a matter of scheduling for the Channel 22 yeah. guys and the the feeling of the committee. You know, my instinct is probably not, but that's certainly something up to the committee or you folks to make a decision. I, I just think from, from my own point of view, it's such an interest in the town. So many people are interested in this issue. I think that being totally transparent, being on TV, might be a good idea. Yeah. If, if it can work out with the schedule sure. in there and stuff, I think yeah. it'd be a good idea. And that's all I have. Thank you. And I, and I agree. I think, I think uh, it should be an odd number, I think. So you think Jimmy should be a voting member? Well, what I was saying, and this is something that will have to be decided, and maybe we have to decide it here tonight, although I, I don't think we probably can because you don't have a, um, a feeling of who these different people are. are it breaks down to several, many of them are, are interested in the condos. Others are interested in the commercial trash. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you have... Is you some have another group? Yeah, you have... Well, I see each. Again, it's... 
from the voices that have been expressed to you so far, mm -hmm. Mr. Sobodek from the Rational Taxpayers, he's, I think, a good voice to be there to represent that group. Mm -hmm. um, you've got a couple of folks from town, one gentleman who lives on Edgewood Drive, one gentleman who lives up on Colonial Circle. Um, you've got beach folks. Uh, Mr. Fleming has, as I understand, one of each. You know, he's a business owner, he's had a condo or has a condo and a home. So you've got folks that come from the different voices you've heard so far. I think it's a fairly good representation. Well, do you anticipate that maybe the the committee would break down into uh, one working on the trash of the commercial and one working on the um, I don't condos. I don't. I see it Keep if you charge us one group. I mean, well, again, let's see what develops. Let's see what the interest of the folks are. Um, it's going to be important. I mean, we're coming into the summer. I can imagine from time to time, depending on the frequency of our meetings, having quorum issues. You know, amongst folks who are available. Um, and commitment right. to it, but uh, every one of these folks has shown some interest and passion, so I don't think that's an issue. Well, I do feel, though, that there, uh, again, w if we were coming up with Warren articles that are going to be presented, and we're going to fine tune them afterwards, um, that they be a separate Warren article for the business and a separate or or sure. Warren article for the condo, mm -hmm. so that both sides mm -hmm. are given a choice. The other part that um, ha no one's mentioned. Um, is about how many meetings there are going to be or a timing of when, the, um, when it should be all finished or finalized. Hmm. Right, so you've indicated finalized in October. <clears throat> that's, yeah, yeah. so that's I, our feedback, I think, that we're giving to you. I and see at least once a month, but again, depending on the work that needs to be done and what the committee's feel is, we could be more than, it could be twice a month, mm -hmm. but I intend to have that conversation <laughs> with folks, and some of that I think is going to be dependent upon the discussion and whether we think we're making progress or not. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'm, I think it's uh, long overdue, and I think that um, it needs to be specific so people understand it when they vote on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think one area that has to be addressed is the commercial uh, businesses who already pay and have always paid to get rid of their own waste. I just want to reiterate that we decided as a board that we were going to have one committee yeah. to address the town-wide trash issue. I agree. Commercial, about trash and recycling or just trash? beach, condo, town, west, east, north. Yeah. It's all one. Your collection issues. Collection mm -hmm. issues. Yeah. Right now yeah. it costs us about $1 million for solid waste. Yeah. Okay, so what are we going to do going forward? We have a contract with waste management that expires in June of 20. So right, to, yeah. right now it's the perfect time to be doing what we're going to do. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you just said earlier, too, like we're coming into the summer season. So some of these guys, they might not be able to make a meeting or two for whatever reason. Yeah. But, I mean, you'll still probably end up with a quorum and you'll probably be okay, and I'm sure they'll talk to each other. Right. But I think that, you know, your, your uh, October is good because if we're going to do bidding process, do we need to, like, start doing that early in 2020, right? Mm -hmm. Need to start doing it now. Yeah. Now, well, the yeah, the so. issue of I think the issue identifying for the board on various collection issues is going to be, you know, what's the recommendation? Let's 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 say we have multiples that come forward, and they will incur not only policy but also cost. So mm -hmm. those would be the Warren article part. What you're talking about is the renegotiation of the contract, the base mm -hmm. contract for our hauling and 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 disposal fees. Those really are separate but interrelated. And those that's are separate, separate Warren articles. Yeah, too. that's a separate discussion, mm -hmm. the negotiation. It is guided by what we do, and our costs will be yeah, driven by the end, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, because that's what we're going to have to contribute as a selectman, is what are these costs of these potential Warren articles that's going right. to be. Yes. And, right. uh, and again, it is one um, uh, committee, but it is two separate issues, the mm -hmm. trash of the commercial, of the... Uh, Pick up for commercial and the pick up for the condos. But you can't. One, they can be addressed separately. They, they've never been addressed uh, uh, together. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you have businesses in this community who for years have paid to get rid of their own waste, and that's another section of the population, I think, in this context well, that needs to be addressed. They can, they, if they want to put their, they had their chance to get on the committee, and these committees are going to make these decisions, and we need to put them to the public so that the public can have their final well, is say. Is there going to be some compensation or some accommodation for businesses 
like the galley hatch, like that, LeMay. That's, all, you know, that's, all we're, that's why we're not going to have a selectman right. there. This is a committee that's going to decide these things. And it's going to be dealt with as a whole town. I think I agree with well, that. I hope that's so. the issue. I'll make Rusty. a motion that we, we appoint this committee with, with the names given and also adding Jamie there as, as the 15th person hmm. so that you have a uh, an odd number. So if you we won't need have it. it. If you need it. Um, and uh, The final date? The final date will be November 1st. All right. I second it. And then you, you know you know what we're looking for out of that is we're looking for. So I think that the report date is if you do no later than November 1st, but you want the report as soon as we have correct mm -hmm. consensus to get into the budgeting process and the whole warrant. Yeah, and process, I would the like to the see the, uh, the, um, um, the motion put that there will be, the idea that we're talking here tonight is what are we going to end up with? We need to end up with a recommendation for these Warren articles. So you're saying recommendation or recommendations yes. Yes. from the group? Because again, I can envision you will see multiple recommendations. That's fine. You know, I mean, again, we all know that going in, right? You yeah. have the light switch one, which was done as early as 2014, I think the last vote, the privately petitioned mm -hmm. article. That failed. But that's, I can see that potentially being a question that's posed again, mm -hmm. as are these various differentials. We'll yeah. let the committee do its work. Yeah. I'll report back to you as the progress comes, if we need guidance. Uh, but let's see what they come yeah. up with. And Several folks have, have to, ideas. They're going to have to start with the baseline. Is the baseline yeah. mm -hmm. the policy we already had? Uh, you know, that's what... I, I would say yes, because your vote in the last time was to stay status quo, to add nothing, right. delete mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, is your baseline. What your current policy is, is what the town is picking up. That's your baseline, and that, that was the motion, as I recall it, um, was to do no changes until this process took mm -hmm. place. But, you know, and again, I think that there should be specific numbers of, you know, how many, you know, what uh, what are the allowances? Sure. What are these peop these businesses or condos allowed? Okay. Because we need to be able, when they call up and ask us, we need to give them an answer. Okay. That's specific. And Mr. Waddell? No, you had a motion, Mr. Yeah. United, a second. I just have one, yeah. one more comment. Um, as you are looking at this, um, you, you need, I think, to refer to Article 8 in 2011, because what happened with that article was on the floor of the deliberative session, the... Um, the but Chuck Rage made a motion to allow the businesses to buy the carts. That opened the door, because that did pass, that opened the door for a businessman buying, uh, there's no restriction. He just said, let the business owners buy the carts. Well, that's why we're going to have that's specific, a, that's why we're looking to have specific yeah, guidelines. That's right. one of the kicking so off something points. something like that would change well, under the new... Just to answer your statement is, my intention is to, as much as possible, we've been going through all of our Warren article stuff and oh, giving an entire story. history yeah. of votes that have taken place, literally from yeah. the beginning of it, yeah. um, which is in the gray book, to certain votes right. that weren't recorded in there, and to have legal's opinion. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, for example, a question that's been posed to legal is, say, your Warren article that failed, for example. Yeah. Uh, the question is, no means no, yeah. right? But in that case, does no mean yes? Yeah. You know, that article said, we're going to stop doing this, this, and this. That failed yeah. tremendously. Yeah. So the question of the alternative is, well, that failed. Does that mean the town voted yes to do it to everybody? Yeah. I'm not sure that's the case. And yeah. legal's working on that yeah. issue. So um, that's where we're at. The baseline is what you've motioned in your, yeah. your meeting when you develop this. Let's let these folks do the work and report back to you when we're making progress or we get log jammed. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a tool for us to do, make further considerations when we get this information. Right. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, motion and second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Very Thank good. You. Thank you. Um, and we'll be looking forward to it. <laughs> Me too. Where, where, where do you think that you'll have these um, meetings? Uh, I, I hope to move it around because people are in different places. Yeah. Uh, but here, down the police station, you know, places yeah. we normally go. Okay, that's great. That's my hope. And we'll, yeah. obviously, we'll put it out, we'll put agendas out so people see the dates we're missing, if public wish to come, that type of thing. So mm -hmm. that's the goal. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> and um, <laughs> now we have the town manager's report. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the uh, first session of the Household Hazardous Waste Collection will be on Saturday, June 1st. 
from 8 a.m. to 12 noon in the DVW facility one hard odds way. Please go online, take a look at the instructional manuals, which uh, are upstairs in the counter. Yeah. Uh, you need to know what is what can be disposed of and what how it, how it is to be disposed of, mm -hmm. how you need to bring it to the facility. That's very yeah. important. That's good. Most of these chemicals are extremely dangerous. Yeah. They need to be handled in a very careful way. The construction for the new kids' kingdom will not take place until at least August due to the replacement of the construction yeah. of the culverts in and around the general area of the playground. The delay is due to safety concerns for the children during that construction period. Good. Um, we're hoping to get that started just as soon as school is out, so we're not yeah. dealing with school buses and things of that nature yeah. on the roadway. Uh, it's very important that we move forward with that as quickly as possible. The fire department has posted the date for the examination to fill the vacant captain's position. All the individuals who have completed the probationary period for lieutenant by June 1st of this year will be eligible to take the examination. Mm, good. That's going to be done by the um, Department of Safety. The New Hampshire Fire Standards and Training Commission. Uh, They're going to hold the examination for us. Good. <clears throat> The uh, Department of Natural, Re Natural and Cultural Resources, formerly known as DREAD, <laughs> has notified me that they are working on the JOP for the beach, and I think I've sent you a couple of memorandums that we've received in the last few uh -huh. days from them. One item they would like to have returned to the document is the termination clause that was previously removed. Replacing that clause will allow for quicker approval by the state. Uh, the document is now under review, and they'll be notified. They'll we'll be notified of any other changes or concerns. The, the reason for including the uh, re-including the termination clause, according to what I've been told by uh, Natural Resources, is that the Department of the Attorney General needs to review this. If that clause is not in there, and we'll probably have extensive revisions and plans uh, with regards to it. Uh, so we're suge they're suggesting that this go in, so they won't be doing that. It's up to the board. Hmm. Uh, you can see there have been a couple of additional memorandums. I'm waiting for the final memo to come in from them yeah. to tell us on what they would like to do. Yeah. Uh, the Department of Public Works is uh, awaiting a meeting with the beach crews from the state beach to determine if a new um, suggested process can be used to remove the sand from the beach cleanings. The meeting could not take place until sweeping starts, and that may be as late as May 28th when the Public Works Director returns from vacation. Hmm. We're looking at a modification of the existing plan so that when they sweep up, we could remove most of the sand from the material that's swept, and therefore the material could be taken directly to the transfer station, paid for, and uh, tipped into the, uh, the trucks going to uh, hmm. the landfill. That would be a big bonus for us, a big bonus for them, and it would get rid of those um, somewhat odiserous uh, roll-off containers that are down the beach mm -hmm. all summer long. Aquarium projects uh, that they will be installing a new water main on Church Street and could begin as early as May 14th. We're obviously past that date at this point, but I did talk to Public Works today, and they are thinking of starting this week. Good. Um, and they'll be starting Church Street, which means that construction on that roadway, uh, the roadway will significantly narrow. Mm -hmm. They're going down the south side of the roadway all the way to uh, Route 101. They're going to cross Route 101 and go yep. up the, I guess it's the eastbound side of, of 101 facing the, uh, facing the beach yeah. or the ocean. Uh, they're going to, my understanding is that they can get permits from the state, which are, run, are currently underway of, of of them obtaining them, is they're going to work down there all summer. Good. Starting sometime, I hope, after the 4th of July, mm -hmm. uh, because we're going to have traffic problems down there. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> please be careful on Church Street. The road is going to be significantly narrowed with them working on it. We're about to clean up Church Street, as far as our end is concerned. Okay. Um, if you didn't notice, the uh, new bridge was installed this morning. Mm -hmm. Two 20-ton yeah. cranes come in and lift it in place. Yeah. 
the piping is on the bridge. It will be connected up with the existing piping from the uh, Church Street pump station. Wow. And we will be somehow testing those pipes over the next week uh, to see if uh, they are, in fact, hold. They, they pressure test and hold. Good. Uh, if that is confirmed, we'll start the cleanup on the shoulders by removing the auxiliary uh, main that was put in for the winter time. Get that cleaned up, get that uh, taken out, and we'll probably reseed the area again just to make sure that it takes, and then we'll be out of there. Uh, the area on Church Street will not be paved until after Aquarian has finished with the installations yeah, down good. there because they've got different house services to connect and yeah. they've got a main to replace, and that's a fairly lengthy job. So while well, they're going to persecute that as quickly as they can, that still takes time. There'll be a public hearing <clears throat> held by the state of New Hampshire in this room on June 4th at 7 p.m. Our Aquarians re uh, on the Aquarians' request for a groundwater withdrawal permit for well number 22, they are planning on withdrawing 1.25 million gallons per day from that new well mm. uh, to, to meet the demands of their current system. Hopefully that will uh, come about, but we'll see what happens with the public hearing. We have a couple of other things, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have been notified we did the line of ground water did we? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've all reviewed the May fifteenth letter from from uh, dread. Or excuse me, from, from natural resources. Uh, that will be on your next agenda after we work with them to try to straighten all that out. The state is working on appropriating funds to allow the harbor dredging to take place. Oh, I think as nice. we're all from everybody, we have two former representatives of the legislature here, so they, they're well aware of the fact that the state has to pay part of this dredging cost. That's before the legislature right now. Uh, I'm told that's going to be passed and it's going to be uh, effective. So uh, we've also received a communication from the United States Department of Commerce wanting us to participate in the new construction program for the Bureau of the Census. Uh, that will be, a, if you would like to have them come and explain that, I certainly can arrange for them to come to your next meeting. It's a program that's going to require a lot of time and dedication <coughs> by us <coughs> help them God, love us. Um, you signed tonight a proclamation for the week of may 19th to 25 is public works week and uh, <laughs> they are conducting a food drive uh, you will see a uh, uh, bottle truck up in the front lobby that is slowly filling up with food um, Please bring your donations in and put it in there. That, that truck was uh, built and designed by the people at Public Works on their time. And we appreciate all our efforts in that, re in that regard. So when does that end? That will end the 25th, sir. Uh, we have a number of pieces. I've given you a number of pieces of legislation, that, uh, bulletins that we have received mm -hmm. today and over the last couple of days. Um, and I, I'd, I'd like you to review them because I think our representatives need to have input from you as selectmen as opposed to input from us as administrative officials. Yeah. Yeah. There is a new proposal to have a 6.2 income tax uh, on wages over $32,900, uh, which I think needs your attention to some degree. And I don't think that's enough money to fund the schooling. But um, that's what it's aimed to do. Um, there's also uh, Senate Bill number 36, which raises some constitutional uh, requirements and claims. Uh, House Bill 616, uh, dealing with um, information from municipalities, uh, needs your attention. If you, if you would please read that, that information that we've given out to you. And um, if you feel it's necessary, and I think it probably is, please contact our state representatives and state senators to give them your opinion of what should happen. The final thing I have is the Hampton Beach Area Commission is having a meeting um, on May 23rd in this room uh, at 7 p.m. That's it, Mr. Chairman. That's the same night as the 
meeting at the beach? Yes, sir. It is. That's why they want to start at five o'clock. That they want to hold it quickly. Are yes. Are going to be coming they would to like to meeting. make sure everybody can get there too. Well, yeah. I thought the St. Pat's game was Wednesday. Isn't that the twenty third? No, it's the twenty second. Oh, it's the twenty second. Twenty third is Wednesday, right? No, because it is. I just 20th. think it was Wednesday too, but maybe it yeah. isn't. I can't see that calendar. I can't see it either. So. The, the 23rd at 7. Today's the 20th. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow's the 21st. Right. Wednesday's, Wednesday's the 22nd. Okay. Yeah, Thursday's the 23rd. Yeah. It's yeah. Thursday at 7 o'clock. Yeah. Questions for the town manager, Mrs. Wolsey? Yes. Just I've uh, sent a heads up to Fred earlier in the week. I've had trouble signing on uh, to the uh, Town of Hampton website and to our website where we get our uh, information and our uh, agendas and stuff and it at first I thought it was Paul turning off the system after hours to make m some maintenance but apparently not and then Paul did send out an email a couple of days ago talking about some intrusion into uh, systems uh, I think if there's some way we can do it I'm not sure how you do these days it's all crazy with these these uh, people intruding on systems, but it's very annoying not to be able to sign on and see what's going on. I, I don't know how we correct that, but it's happening all, all the time now. We periodically have these problems. Uh, a couple of years ago, we were hit several hundred times a day with the Chinese oh, wonderful. trying to break into our systems, which oh. we had somehow managed to avoid, and they yeah. finally stopped after you know, this stuff several is going months on. of no successful break-in. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a problem with the existing systems, and it's not our system; it's right. the outside. Right. And we're trying to correct that, but uh, we don't control everything outside of our building. Yeah. It's a dreadful pain in the neck. So I just. I think it's quite similar to. Um, I was listening to the news this morning, and uh, I didn't realize that these robocalls. Yes. There are 12,500,000 of those made every day in New Hampshire. That's a lot of robocalls. That's terrible. And they're trying to break into computer systems as well with that type of information. So we're trying to combat that every day, and, and they're trying to do a good job with it. Too. Yeah. We just have to try to stem the tide. That's disgusting. It really is. Thank you. Regina? Yes. Um, thanks, Fred. So... Aquarian might not be starting until next week because I had a question today about whether or not they're going to be working over Memorial Day weekend. Do we know that? We don't know. They have given us very little information at this point. Mm. They have a permit from Public Works to do Church Street. We do not know yet as to whether or not they have a permit to do Route 101 yeah. and the Army Corps of Engineer permit. I know they're working on it. They're probably very close. Uh, but they would like to start Church Street as soon as possible. Actually, they want to start with the um, interconnection of the house services yeah. because that's the most difficult part of the job. Right. The rest of it's a straight dig. Uh, they want to start that within the next few days if they can. Okay. And as far as the bills, HB 616, that was the bill that I was reading on that HMA had sent us some information on. That's and, correct. Uh, Christy did the financial impact to yep. that. So that bill is actually being heard tomorrow yes. at 1 o'clock. So I, I mean, I can send out an email myself tonight and just let people know what the financial impact will be for the yeah. town of Hampton it's if that COLA adjustment has to start. And that's with no change to the rates, which is probably going to be unlikely. Yeah. Well, sure what, what bothers me is that uh, it's $25,000, $26,000 a year for the next... 30 Lots years, years yeah. <laughs> yeah that's 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 a pretty high price to pay to give uh, we don't have a lot of people here who are retired with more than 20 years service mm, right. in comparison to some of the other towns in the state some of the larger municipalities mm. we have a number but we that's that's a pretty high price to pay oh, I'm uh, sorry, that, I'm, I particularly think I with a huge about the hearing on that but I'll still plan to do that the other bill you brought up is being heard tomorrow at 1 p.m. the yes. HB 198 yep and, uh, this is the end of the year, so they're trying to get everything done. And it's, a, it's a mad rush to get finished. Uh, I do have a problem with them uh, trying to stick some of these costs onto the cities and towns, <laughs> but that's what they're doing. 
They're experts at that, friend. Right. Experts. Um, and then I have a question that I got. Do we know if DOT installed the camera at the 101 landing mode light? There's not one. There's four or five cameras oh, wow. at Route 101 and Landing Road. Uh, they're not positioned yet, but I did stop and or actually slow down. I didn't really stop, but I slowed down and counted them. And I counted at least four, and it appears to be there may be a fifth one on the, on the pole. So they're obviously going to uh, use those cameras to monitor the intersection oh. from all directions. Wow. So that, I don't know what their objective there is, but uh, <laughs> it's obviously something to do with traffic control. Uh, we have a lot of traffic that runs through there in the summertime. And I just, I, oh, can I just interrupt uh, yeah. for a second? I, somebody just keeps texting me saying, Wednesday the 22nd, yeah. because it was confusing. They, they thought it came over as Wednesday the 23rd. Oh, no, it's the 23rd. That's the we're talking about no. the Hampton Area Commission meeting. No, we're talking the about 20th. the public meeting down at the park. Oh, right. for the 22nd. Second. The 22nd, second. Wednesday the 22nd. The 22nd. Yes. Yeah. HVAC is the 23rd. Okay. Yeah. Did you have anything else, Regina? I just have one last thing. For the JLP with the state, Fred, do you think that putting that termination clause back in there is okay? It really doesn't do any harm. Um, they don't need an excuse to terminate it. They, uh, I don't think they can we terminate it. We haven't had an agreement for what, well, the last two years. No, but we're still honoring the original agreement right. that was there. We're still doing all the things that needed to be done, mm -hmm. and uh, we're doing them successfully, both of us together, right. uh, even though we don't have a JOP. Um, so really, to terminate it really doesn't mean they're going to terminate it because they still have to work with us, and we still have to right. work with them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Waddell? Yeah, just very quickly, um, on talking on the, the work on Church Street and on 101 and all that, mm -hmm. I think somebody contacted all the selectmen, Peter Tilton, Tilton, on the police having wands when they're out there. You know how the, the civilians yeah. have a wand that says slow or stop? Yeah. yeah. And, you know, some people sometimes, especially if you're coming, yeah. going uh, east in the morning or west in the afternoon mm -hmm. and the sun's setting or something yeah. you can't see mm -hmm. just the officer holding his hand up so if we put a suggestion the chiefs here too we can listen uh, yeah. to maybe thinking about that yeah. the police having a wand to say slow down mm -hmm. stop so you see more clearly what's happening yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned that, that to Fred when I came in yeah. 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 yeah okay <laughs> just so anything else I'm, I'm set the only thing you. I have Fred since you brought up Church Street Yes. Is uh, right now that's worse than a class six dirt road uh, if you travel on it. Uh, and I don't know if maybe the company that we had did it can smooth that out a little bit uh, with what's there, at least with the part that we've left until then. Because if we've got to drive over that all summer long, that's going to be. The trick to it is stay in the left. Well, they're going to be digging up the left. Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's why the I'm. Good part. That's the only good part. So what I'm saying is, can we get it? See if they could smooth that out a little bit. It's going to take a lot of asphalt to do that, and they're going to have to dig it all up next week or so. Uh. As soon as the, the water department finishes there, we're going to pave the entire road. Yeah. All right. It's just they've, know, left, it's, they've it's, left it in a mess. I, I go over it every day, and mm -hmm. and I'm not happy with it either, but I, I realize that we're we have a certain amount of money left in the appropriation. And if we're going to repave the road now, we're going to dig it up in a few weeks and have to repave it again. So we probably we won't have enough money to do all that. I just didn't know if it was something within their contract they were supposed to leave it so that it was at least passable. Well, it's what's happened is, and this is one of the reasons why we don't pave a road immediately after we put in materials by excavation. Oh, I, I because the road settles, and exactly. that's exactly what's happened. Oh yeah. So, but it is it is terrible if it's going to be I'll, that way. All I'll speak along. to Public Works and see how what they can do to help help it out. All right. Thanks. Driving over here on High Street is a challenge. I mean, I just went the down roads are in terrible today. shape. So, uh, my yes. question is to you, Mr. Welch, is Sir. is there a um, was there all of the uh, um, what do you call them uh, permits needed for that tow truck parade? The chief maybe can answer that. Were the it, were they issued the permits that were supposed to be issued? I know they the same every year. Yeah, there's uh, several permits that are required because they travel over both state and town roads. Yeah. So we did do the uh, the town road permit. You folks approved that after the fire chief and I and the um, public works director signed off. Yeah. And then the state permit for a state parade. They also sought that. Yeah. 
So was there a question as to whether they had done it? Well, somebody called and said that uh, they called DOT and they told them there was no permit. Oh, I'd have to check with that, but they're supposed to have a permit through DOT for that. Yeah. They were calling from Maine, so I thought, you know. Well, if it's every year we do get a lot of calls on this particular event, but if you yeah. follow social media at all, I did take the time to to look at what I saw today on uh, in the No Hampton, which is a pretty good site. I get a lot of useful information from there, and there was the at the time 206 comments on it, and I actually read every single one of them. Okay. There was only four opposed to the event. Everybody else yeah. was encouraging us to expand it. So, for what it's worth, <laughs> yeah. so it, it it you know it's just one of those events that stretches. Yeah. I was at 6th Street when the first record went by, yeah. Dave's Garage, Weeds It. Yeah. They were still pouring out of the state park and coming over the bridge. Yeah. So uh, by the time they got to High Street, we got the last wrecker onto the road mm -hmm. and makes the loop through town, down one kind of road, and back to the state park. So it is a movable one. We have cars where we have two lanes are able to get in and out, but uh, it is a big doing. So Was the size bigger? It's getting bigger, getting, bigger getting bigger every year. Okay. Getting bigger every year. Thank you. Okay, right. now we're going to be moving on to old business, mm -hmm. SAU 90, Channel 13 funding request. Mr. Lunny is here, the business administrator. Do you want to join us at the table? Sir, <laughs> 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 Jeff, you want to join us? Sure. I'm not sure. Thank you. Hi, Hi, good evening. John Johnson, 951 Ocean Boulevard. Good. So the, the request was from the school committee for how much money was it? $255,000. Mm -hmm. Which is in the cable committee, which is in the cable fund, and it was, it's to enhance, well, one, one, one of you tell us what the money's going to be used for. Please. Yes, we have um, <laughs> The money is primarily going to be used to make the new auditorium in the renovated Hampton Academy into, uh, uh, to make it broadcast ready, um, to have uh, four cameras put in there as well as um, lighting for television and for stage presentations, um, a complete sound system that will facilitate plays and so on as well as uh, TV broadcasts um, and also a projection system. Mm -hmm. So that's what it will be used for. It'll be ideal for the community as well as for the children. Right, and it comes out of the cable fund that comes out of the, the franchise fee, right? And the franchise fee Correct. is it's to not support, tax money. Right, it's to support PEG, Correct. public education and government channels. So, so do you have more to say about it? Did you want to say anything else? Um, um, the... What is the situation where that is that when a comment you're talking about or no? No, no, so this the, is the new Academy. Yeah. Mr. Academy. Chairman, this would be at Hampton Academy, the new renovation, the new auditorium, which will be used for the meetings and debates and mm -hmm. plays, um, will be used by the community as well as the students in the school. So, do you anticipate coming back and asking for, for other monies um, to take from the fund in the immediate future or this not is not that I'm aware of sir no yeah no. okay questions mrs wolsey what does it cost us to rent when kind of the auditorium for the delivery session which not many people show up for Do you 500 know, Fred? i think somebody told me 500 or whatever oh no several thousand dollars <coughs> several thousand yeah. okay i wasn't i'm not sure on that um i sat on the renovation committee for two years. Uh, we, I think, worked hard. I think we did a good job as a group. Uh, what I have a problem with right now is that if extra funding was needed, I think we should have been told at the time we were going through all those, those uh, meetings and, and getting all the planned together, it was kind of a shock to see and a request for $255,000. I mean, you were planning the auditorium. You knew what uh, technical assistance would be needed, I would think. 
and you know an X number of uh, sound. I don't know. I'm not good at all that stuff. But I would think I I would have hoped that that would have been included. It never occurred to me to ask. You know, have you got everything in here? A uh, twenty-six million dollar project. I I've been kind of floored at asking for the extra money. I would have thought logically that would have been included. So that mm -hmm. I I have to say that got me upset. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. May I? Man, because I was on that committee also, mm -hmm. and there was talk at that time of that when these when when they were going to do the studio for <clears> Channel 13, <throat> that there'd be funding that would be available for that from the from the cable uh, fund. Mm -hmm. So there was talk of that what during that committee. So it wasn't something that was omitted or left out. Hmm. One of the challenges is that you had a design and concept when we when we initially proposed the project working very hard through the design process to keep scope uh -huh. uh, and and stay yeah. within budget yeah. but you know you know that between the first time of the vote the first vote the failed vote and the second vote there was a million dollar increase the market continues to rise and we've been mm -hmm. very successful in chasing the subcontracts the steel uh, and all the other elements the reality is we've had three quarters of a million dollars <coughs> worth, of, uh, worth of challenges in terms of mm -hmm. abatement an ash dump that that was unforeseen and it's Mm -hmm. uh, and it's uh, it's unsuitable soils, septic tanks that had to come out of uh, uh, the house lots uh, that are part of the property now. Mm -hmm. So there are there have been budget challenges. I think yeah. we've weathered them. We continue to be uh, we continue to target um, finishing within budget. But when you have those challenges, there are some mm -hmm. things. Certainly, mm -hmm. many of these are things that were beyond yeah. what was anticipated, uh, and so. We're into the home. We're into the stretch now. We're into the home stretch, and, and mm -hmm. this is this request that the superintendent has brought forward uh, helps helps us make sure that we deliver exactly what we yeah. uh, want for the students and for the community in that yeah. space. There are two things to think about. I know people have um, uh, and the the um, whatever it was that was passed around, Jim. You know the. The f we filled out on whether we watched Channel 13 and oh, all the, that the, stuff. The survey. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it showed pretty low uh, mm -hmm. uh, figures for, for people watching. And I will say from a personal standpoint, and I check, I go on look, looking at it from time to time, uh, I am kind of offended at seeing old movies on there. I'm, that's mm -hmm. not where I expect to be on the school channel. So that, I've, that has gotten me a little, a little bit upset. Uh, Mr. Lenny, I have always respected you tremendously. In your capacity as business administrator, there's, there's nobody better. And I want you to know that this has nothing to do with you, because I respect you just tremendously. But I was very shocked to see the 255,000 come up. Any other comments, Mrs. Wolseley? <laughs> That, that, that's it. That's it. Regina? I have comments. I spoke with the superintendent after. Oh. I was also a no vote with Selectman Woolley a couple weeks ago. And the reason why a no vote is that I understand what the cable fund is for, that it's not affected by the tax rate, but it's a quarter of a million dollars. Okay? And finding out about it three or four days before mm -hmm. my meeting and then just automatically assuming that I'm going to say yes. When, and I had talked to the superintendent about that whole dump or whatever you guys found over there, and I know the kids were having fun going through everything that they found, and these things do happen, but I would have just liked that, like what you're doing now, I would have liked that to happen. Yeah. And we do have the survey going on, and if you read the comments, a lot of them are not positive on what people yeah. think of Comcast and Channel 22. Okay. May, may, uh, 13. You know, less channels, more money, the people paying the franchise fees. I don't even have Comcast. I go and I streamline it yeah. on my laptop, and I don't pay any franchise fees. So, I mean, the people that do pay the franchise fees have a problem with that. Yeah. So all that <coughs> background noise information, what do you want to call it, and then just getting a letter from the superintendent asking for $255,000 yeah. to be deducted. Shot from the cable committee fund, which I think is pulling in too much money, to be honest with you. Right. So I'm going to approve this tonight because I know that 
we, and I also want to reiterate because I've asked Kathleen Murphy a bunch of times and people don't want to believe me, but with the Academy project, there is going to be a community center that seniors will be yeah. able to use. Yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. that needs to be clarified because a lot of people don't believe that it's really going to happen. So that will also be beneficial. This money will also be beneficial for that. But what it really was was the um, presentation mm. of asking for the money. So I appreciate you coming in tonight. Thank you. Mr. Waddell. I'm fine. Mr. Friday. I'll, I'm prepared to make the motion that we pass the 200 and... 55. Yeah. I, I'll talk to you first. Okay. Um, and then you can make the motion. Um, yeah, I uh, think that, you know, as part of the negotiations with Comcast, one of the things that we really tried to have to isolate is what is the future of this fund? Because mm -hmm. everyone I know, you have to have rocks in your head to still have Comcast. It's when you don't have it and you get a $50 uh, 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 antenna like I have, I get hundreds of, tr of uh, channels if you go to Pluto and this and that. So I think the future of this, it, it's got to be coming to an end, uh, at least the <coughs> amount of money that's been coming in. So, you know, it's nice that we have this money now, but I, I'm not so sure yeah, we're going to be able right. to plan on it in the future. Yeah. Um, particularly, we have our first... Uh, you know, one of our first considerations is these selectmen's meetings so we can get out the basic information to the public. And, you know, hopefully it will continue to roll in the money. But I, for one, would be in favor of not making the people pay all this extra money. Yeah. Uh, because Comcast is ridiculous. That's why everyone's leaving it. Um, to have to pay that money. And it doesn't matter where you go. It's not just around here. They're talking about it everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate all that you do. And we have a motion here tonight. Yeah. Motion Second. to approve the 255000 mm -hmm. Is it? That's correct. That's the money. And we have a second. And I just wanted to ask, what was your, uh, what is your position? I, uh, in the school department, I'm yeah. the media coordinator for oh, Channel 13. I know. I've seen you before, and I, I'm sorry. I couldn't yeah, quite remember. a good job. And what is your <coughs> last name? Judson. J-U-D-S-O-N. Okay, I won't forget yeah. again. Thank you. So You're we have welcome. a first and a second. And all those in favor? Against? I'm opposed. Opposed. Thank you for coming in this evening. Thank, Thank you, you very time. much. Yeah. Thank you for Thank your you time. Guys. And everybody, you know, to love to give you all the money we can give you, but it isn't always there. Thank you. Um, so we have... New business. Um, is there any other old business? One of the things I wanted to bring up, because I, I wasn't sure how it was going to go tonight, um, where we had so many things, particularly the uh, about the committee. But I know, Regina, you asked about... Um, to have uh, something mentioned about the um, abstaining from. Oh yeah, I was uh, you know, I was going to bring it up under new business, yeah. but I can. Bring well, why it up don't under you bring now. it up now? Because uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure Mark was here so that we could u have his expertise to answer some of these issues that you might be concerned with. Okay. Yes, I. Um, well, actually, I wanted to inform the public too. By the way. I've recently uh, recused myself from matters regarding Aquarian Water Company mm -hmm. that are not that are not privy knowledge to the general public, and the reason why I've done that is because I'm beginning to develop a relationship with the governmental affairs director of Eversource, and I am not. 100% sure whether it's going to be a true conflict of interest yet as our relationship has just started but because there are some issues that we're dealing the board is dealing with attorney Gerald I just mm -hmm. rather wanted to make that known to the board mm -hmm. maybe I'm you know over exaggerating the position I'm sitting in right now but ethically I feel like better safe mm -hmm. than sorry good so I just, for right now, I would feel more comfortable only dealing with Aquarian matters that are discussed in a public format just because mm -hmm. they are owned by Eversource yeah. since 2017. So 
I, I think that fits with the ethics policy that the board has adopted. Mm -hmm. Good. So did you, do you feel like you got the answer that you wanted or did you want more information? Yeah, no, I mean, I really, I wanted to mm -hmm. really tell, I didn't do it last week because you wanted to, you weren't here and I wanted to do it with the whole board mm -hmm. and then obviously in public at the same time. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I'm glad you think Good. the same. Yeah. And people do bring up, this is a, a, one of those questions that people do bring up, and I know that you've said in the past, Mark, that if someone does have a, uh, you know, an issue, uh, that they shouldn't be, that they're going to abstain. Should the person that is going to be abstaining uh, be asking all of the questions all the way through the meeting and contributing when they know they're going to abstain in the end? I, I, or should they abstain before the cons yeah. cons good point. conversation starts? Yeah. Well, uh, given that the selectman's meeting is a public forum, uh, I think the person who uh, would have that conflict um, can participate in the, should step down from the board, can sit in the audience and interact with the board in that fashion. But I think it helps to have that person make it known up front mm -hmm. that they would be abstaining. Yeah. Which isn't what always happens at all of the board meetings that I watch on Channel 22. Correct. <laughs> so, you know, is this something that should be told to these people, or does every board just make up their own rules? Well, uh, other <coughs> boards do have their own procedural rules, and not every, ev not every board has adopted the selectman's ethics policy. Mm -hmm. um, that's done on a board-by-board -board basis. But for this board, where the board, obviously it's the board's own policy, I think it makes a lot of sense to do. So if the, if the other boards don't have an ethics policy, uh, should they adopt the selectmen's, or do they need to have one? Um, I think it's uh, for the public confidence. I think it's ha it would be helpful if they adopted the selectmen's policy, but it's certainly not mandatory. So do we know what boards don't have a policy? Um, I, I think uh, this was some years ago that the board adopted the ethics policy. I remember a couple of boards did adopt it, but then some others did not. Uh, that could be brought up at a first meeting of a board when it starts to become active mm -hmm. in its time period. Mm -hmm. So could we get some information on this, Fred, which boards can. have adopted the selectman one or which ones don't have a policy? Yeah. Certainly Regina. can, sir. Mark, since you're here, so when a querying comes in for like their regular quarterly report at our public meeting, well, if uh, I would, in line with what I've just said, I think certainly you can be here and uh, interact as any other member of the public. Okay. But for yeah. your own sake, I would I would mm -hmm. step down from the board. Okay, perfect. Good. When it's time to vote. And then could I? Or, ask? or before. Or before. before. So that's what. You, so he's saying that you should step down. I mean, down. I could just step down for the discussion when they're here for the appointment. I could go sit over there. I don't have sure. to with that. Sure. So that you understand. Stand that yes. that you should step yeah. down before the discussion starts. I do, yes, yeah. and, and that's um, in line with our selectmen's. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And then, oh, and then could we just make sure that I know sometimes if Mark sends out emails, I would rather if they're confidential. I just want to make sure that I don't accidentally get anything that has to do with. Something Mark seems to, our, he, I know that he's been sending emails to my um, uh, Gmail account, and I assume that he's sending them to yours, too? Yes. Yeah. N not, not, on, not on Aquarian matters. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah, so I would only make sure, you know, that if Mark is the only one to ever send me confidential emails, if that could be made clear to everyone, yeah. I would prefer them only to come from Mark any confidential email that has to do with any litigation. And I know for the people that are out there, um, I believe it's been changed on the website that our email uh, addresses are the ones. They're different. They're different. Sometimes I'm getting forwards and I have to immediately delete them because I'm unsure they didn't come from Mark and they say confidential. So I would prefer to only get confidential emails from town council yeah. going and forward. Yeah. The... Um, so anyone out there that wants to be in touch, they can go onto the Tom website and see the 
applicable uh, email addresses right. for us. And maybe that's what you might want to do, uh, Mary Louise. The reason why I did it is for exactly what you said. Yeah. I could never get on it. I think it's outrageous you that we're know. having interference that we can't get onto our own and website. I don't know how many letters I've gotten from Nigeria, and I don't know how many uh, Viagra. Yeah. Yes. And well, well, I mine, it just won't even come up on mine. It just twirls. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I check my probably seven, eight times a day. Yes. The only time I had a problem was today, this morning. There was a problem this morning. I don't, I don't have a yeah, problem. Yeah, there was a problem. If it's twirling, that's a computer. That's mm -hmm. that's not the that's not the network. Well, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But it's, it's that's the individual you know, computer trying yeah, to get into the I mean, system and open. For well, me, something's blocking it. Sometimes I can't get the whole uh, the whole thing that's coming through. I only talk get part with of it. with Dylan or, or Paul. Bring you in, in, talk with them, and they can help you out on the technical aspect of it. Mm. Well, I can have my son check it out. Okay, moving on. Yes. Any other old business? No. Oh, wait, I just have one thing yeah. I wanted to bring up. The Navy committee that I'm on was talking about um, having, I guess, one of the precinct lots offer free parking for the Navy crew. And then it just got me to thinking, you know, maybe we could have the town do that, but we don't even offer anything for residents. So I'm not sure if we could at some point have the Hampton Police Department is still going to be in charge of the parking. It's up to you folks. Well, do, uh, do we still have the discount for the island path lot for employees of the beach? We tried to get that program going, but we got zero interest. We didn't get any applications last year when we offered that. Oh. Hmm. I think perhaps the board should consider for a future meeting about whether or not we should let residents of Hampton park in the island path lot for free. This is something that's been brought up many, many, many times and there's never been support for it in the past. I would offer you this. Um, the deputy town manager and I have been tasked with looking at some recommendations to you folks for the, for the pay watch down at the beach. I've had a number of conversations and went up to visit um, actually the Portsmouth Parking Authority last Thursday mm -hmm. with some very interesting information. And they offer a, um, they use an app and they offer the, a, a discount for the residents parking on the streets and in the lots through this app and it's very interesting and with uh intriguing part is is very little startup cost which i know is, is in our tough times we're having with default budgets uh it really piqued my interest so i'm doing a lot of research on that so that might be a better time to have that conversation that we could affect something that's done automatically when somebody uses the app and what mm -hmm. about the um how did that app thing go that the village precinct did I think that's more of a locate. That's more of a park finder. That you know, the parking lots that participate in that give the information where there's available parking. What we're talking about is a manner in which you can pay for your parking without having an attendant taking cash. Try to get away from handling money as much as possible and using mm -hmm. more modern technology to yeah. its best application. That's but that's a way the Portsmouth does it. They have a program where if you want to on street park, they I have I have the form out of my car right now, and you just fill out the form with a vehicle proof that you're a resident and that goes into the system so that when their parking enforcement people go by and punch in that plate they can uh, see that you are you pay at a discounted rate yeah. it's not free but it's discounted yeah. substantially so, so let us know when you want to take that um, on and um, come and talk to us we're trying to get some of the folks from uh, park mobile is the company I'm looking at there's other options but that seems to be a growing one in the Northeast yeah. And Portsmouth has had great success with it, so wow. I'm, I'm doing some more research so on that. So when you're ready, just let us know. I will. We'll be glad yeah. to uh, devote some time to that. Thank you. Okay. Good. Um, so new business. Mary Louise? No, I think I ran out of steam. Oh. <laughs> Regina? Um, I have, well, I guess it's new because I've just gone through it, but we received a couple weeks ago the averages and budget uh, spreadsheets that Christy had put together for and I was wondering if I've gone through it and I have my own comments that I'm probably going to get over to uh, the budget committee and I'll bring up one right now since we love talking about trash tonight uh, the 2019 budget for trash is 964,000 which is just under a million dollars and the actual for 18 was over a million, and the 2017 actual was $999,000. So I know this is the analytical review that some people and mm -hmm. some people on the budget committee are influenced by, 
And if it's okay with the board, I would like to ask that those schedules that Christy prepared can go to the budget committee as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. If that's okay. I know yeah. they have a meeting tomorrow, and I don't think they have the next meeting till June, but mm -hmm. yeah. if uh, Christy is comfortable with the report, yeah. she was comfortable enough to give them to us, yeah. I would like to uh, it's a good idea. give that to the budget committee. So it's something for them to review. Yeah. I know they might be taking a couple months off for meetings in the summer, but they can at least have this. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully it can answer some of their questions for when they get the budget. Mm -hmm. Good. It's going to so the, the representative to the budget committee. I've already asked Christy for that. I asked her last oh, week, good. so she's supposed Sweet. to be getting that one. Perfect. It's all ready for tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, new business, Jim? No. Set. Rusty? All set. No. Um, well, I just kind of thought of this right now. So, <clears throat> And it is something that get, uh, when people ask me questions about what's happening in the town, and the ta it always gets, comes down to the taxes in the end. Um, is there any type of forecasting that is done uh, to future tax uh, windfalls, maybe, or whatever you want to call them, that we're going to get from all of the condos and the rebuilding that's being done. Um, do you do a, for, a sheet of forecasting, something like that, Mr. Welch? Well, we do forecast what the increase in the valuation of the town is going to be vis-a-vis -vis the building permits that are taken out. And we've been slowly climbing every year our building permits this year are already ahead of last year oh, yeah. so we're going to have a few million dollars more in building value to be added to the community than we did last year hmm. but that's an iffy situation because it depends upon the economy how mm -hmm. they sell because the ones that are on the books now are right. they mm -hmm. going to be selling but people there's a question a lot of people ask well why you know why aren't why isn't there more money available if there's all these new condos and homes and neighborhoods? And well, it's not a matter of money being available. It's a matter of what the town votes for budgets. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> and if you vote to do the default budget and you cut a million dollars out of the regular budget, then there's a million dollars less to do what you did two years ago. Yeah. And that's well, the problem. No, and I understand that. But I think that uh, when people are getting ready to vote, they... It would be nice if they had a feeling of, you know, are we going to be having more money available or? Every year we have more money available vis-a-vis <clears throat> -vis more buildings that are being taxed that were not taxed the year before. Land is finite because we only have so much of it in the town. Yeah. So that's not going to increase. But the number of buildings do increase, and we do, in, in fact, receive additional funds for that as the year goes along because they're added to the tax base but what that does is it lowers the tax rate so you still have the same amount of money mm -hmm. uh, you have another factor in there gentlemen as we attract more and more people more and more traffic more and more services that need to be provided <laughs> by the town including waste uh, the uh, building boom is not necessarily uh, helpful to this community. Okay, so no, uh, and it, th we've, we're finished with new business. Oh, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, on page three of three, did were all those items already taken yeah. care of? No, yes. I didn't even. Yeah. Yes. The, okay. Well, no, no, we, three no, three, no, we, we haven't, haven't even gotten yeah. three of three. No, I didn't see I it. Didn't get that. <laughs> I didn't see it. So okay. Uh, <clears throat> so next we have under new business bid two. 2019-001 grinding and removal of brush long wood and oh, wood chips purchasing that. policy waivers yeah mr chairman we recommend the waivers not be granted and that the the, the uh, <clears throat> bid be void um, as a way of explanation uh, th this was for a three-year period for disposal of uh, brush wood logs and wood chips of the transfer station yeah uh, the last bid proposal we had was $18,440 for the three years. The new bid came in at $44,000 for the same services Good. for the next three right. years. We don't have those funds available. Yeah. We're recommending that this bid not be awarded. Does someone want to make a motion? I'll, so. yeah, I'll second. Okay. Okay. Any other um, conversation? All those in favor? Um, so we are in favor of not going forward with Correct. that. 
Number two is bid 2019-002 ejector trailer purchasing uh, yes. policy waivers. Mr. Chairman, we recommend the waivers be granted. We recommend that the town or the Board of Selectmen authorize the purchase of the vehicle in question, which is a, a, a trash trailer, uh, for, for lack of a better terminology. Uh, there were two bidders, and one of the waivers is to, is to comply with the purchasing policy. There must be a minimum of three. Yeah. The bids are received at $99,400 and $71,190. We recommend the low bid be accepted. It's, they're both the same vehicle, just different manufacturers, different different companies yeah. putting them together. Um, and we recommend the town purchase it because we need the additional trail. Yeah, I'll also move, moved. Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have the agenda items deadline, um, which uh, I talked to Christina about this, and there is... Uh, uh, some people wanting to make the uh, presently it's Wednesday night at 5 o'clock the deadline uh -huh. and cool. people feel like if it was done earlier uh, there would be more time to get the information out there so there could be more studying done um, so how do we feel about that Mrs. Wolsey I don't have a problem with the 5 o'clock <coughs> deadline on Wednesday, on Wednesday or do you want to make it earlier no I think that's fine Regina. Well, I was suggesting that we make it early because it, we're meeting every two weeks and I'm still nice. not getting the agendas till Thursday afternoon or Friday. And I know Christina is busy all the time. And if we could give her more time, free her up. I mean, we're still giving people a whole week Me. while we're taking the breaks right now. I will tell you, I talked to Christina and she would prefer to see it. She suggested Monday. I don't know if Monday, Monday might not be the, the best time. Uh, maybe Tuesday. The problem I but see is though, when you go that early, mm -hmm. you know, if you have something that comes yeah. up, yeah, you know, if it comes up, you know, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, you can still get it in by the deadline. But if you make the deadline Monday, yeah. if something comes up on that Tuesday or Wednesday, you can't get it in. Yeah. Well, why don't we suggest, I, I why don't we try it on Tuesday? Does anyone have I, it? No. I'm, I'm happy with the Wednesday. I like Wednesday. Yeah. Do you I want to make a motion for Tuesday? I'll make a motion that we uh, change it to Tuesday at 5 o'clock. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. see what one day if people no. want to see the Board of Selectmen. And I'll second it for the conversation. Any conversation? No. Okay, so we have uh, a motion to keep it the same. I mean, a motion to make it change it. Yes. To Tuesday. And to Tuesday at yeah. 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock. I'm opposed. Okay, I'll... I'll be in favor. In favor? Opposed. So it stays at Wednesday. Yeah. It's uh, three, four, two against. Mm -hmm. and, and what is this about the private well testing? Well, I know Aquarian was in. I missed the meeting. And I know they're still planning on doing the quarterly testing for PFAS and any type of emerging contaminants. Have we heard anything about DES? Are they still testing private wells, or is that just all kibosh now? If, uh, if, you know, I mean, people have been asking me, and I don't know, I wasn't here at the meeting, so I wanted to address it tonight. I know they were doing it because Aquarian was pretty much getting them to do it. So Aquarian has moved to the quarterly testing, and I know DES is coming up with all these proposed regulations, or our legislators are, and I'd like to know if they're still also <coughs> testing private wells, because that's very important, because they're not regulated at all. So... I'm Do you know sure. the answer to that, Mr. Welch? I was under the impression that Aquarium was doing the testing and the state was paying for it. Or was it the other I way around? I see the way around. Yeah. The other way around, the state was doing it and the Aquarium was paying for it. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. there, was a, there was a quid pro quo here, and, and of course they don't need that anymore now that they're uh, permitting Well 22 because nothing was um. found in the, for the test results that uh, <laughs> they were afraid Well 22 <laughs> would pull material yeah. in that, would affect the private wells that wasn't found to be the case. Well, I, I think they were also doing that testing uh, well, to try to figure out what the so, from what direction was the PFAS <coughs> coming from. Yeah, yeah. Have they figured it out yet? Um, I think they had mixed results. Oh, they weren't. They they it, uh, well, they'd have were, to report there, on it. There are too many places PFAS are being released from. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. 
And, and the only way you'll find out if it comes from the landfill is to, in fact, put a series of test wells just mm -hmm. below the landfill yeah. in the areas they're not now testing and they're not willing to do that. So you won't find out. Yeah. I, I, as the representative declaring, I will check with them tomorrow exactly what the yeah. update is, what the status is, and get yeah. back to everybody. My yeah. thoughts is probably Aquarian was driving that one, and since yeah. they're not driving anymore, it's not getting yeah. done. I'll, I'll get back I think to that's people. the question. I'll yeah. get back to you, Rick, and you can disseminate Okay. Um, okay, so do we have a motion for adjourned? Uh, actually, uh, Mr. Chairman, we need to go into a motion for a non public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon 3 Roman 2 <laughs> small A and small. Uh, which is uh, personnel and small C reputation. I will so, so move. Oh, I'll second Rusty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Roll call. And we need a time. Aye. Time. It is 9.44. 9.44 p.m. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Channel Thank 22. Thank you, Channel 22. Okay, so. You want to wait for <clears throat> them to shut up? He's going to